welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Veronica. Oh, hey. I was surprised to be first. I know. Uh, I'm Che and Sedai on the Discord and forums. Also joining us, we have Ian. Hello, I'm Ian. Uh, Aeon Ian in places. And we also have Ella. Hey, hey, I'm Rosar. And... Uh, I know I'm, I'm laughing too hard at this introduction for some reason. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Good. We're starting strong. And last, but definitely not least, someone oh. I think we've wanted to get on the show for maybe like way too long, but I'm, it, yeah. I'm bad at getting guests for this show because I, I have to wrangle people all the time to get just a cast together. So getting a <laughs> guest, it's, it's a lot, but we have Steve. How's it going? delightful uh i'm steve uh also read and find out uh or at the cosmere not on all the things happy yeah. to be here yes so happy to have you yeah. here uh steve's been making great cosmere content for it's it's been a while like six yeah. years six years okay wow. six years last week yeah okay so it's been a long time since i've wanted to get you on the show is what i've learned because <laughs> yeah. i think that i was like we should get him on the show like for some of your like early videos for like a while ago but then yeah so anyway welcome to the show hi hi and i am chaos on the discord and things and Today, everyone, we have a very exciting topic to talk about. We're talking about the new secret project, Isles of the Ember Dark, which I think is a badass title. I think that's that's it really is that's, it's a good it's, title. That's good. So Brand Brandon dropped another uh, secret project on us with the words of radiance, leather bound crowdfunding campaign. Sorry, not <laughs> Kickstarter. People will get upset <laughs> if I do that. I, I am getting more used to calling it the crowdfunding campaign. Okay. Uh, so, so how how's everyone doing with uh, you know a new a new a new secret project? How 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 you how you guys doing? I have a story. Okay. <laughs> about this. Okay. So you know we got all the whole the whole six three one thing, right? Yes. Yes. And I knew it was going to happen the same as two years ago. I was going to be in class when the video dropped. <laughs> Right. Like, yes. I knew. I knew. Yes. Two years ago, even wilder, like the circumstances because of what was happening at the time. Sure. Like in my personal life. So thank God for the announcement. But anyway, so I had the video muted and I had the subtitles on it. I was like, this is fine. It's it's gonna be why I didn't think it was gonna be something that's big. You know, just some random like well not Kickstarter backer kid announcement. <laughs> um It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I'm literally in the middle of class, the video drops, and, and I'm like, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. But I was just like doing like this at the screen. I was like, <laughs> just like screaming internally. Yep. Yep. So much. I was so much. I was in my car <laughs> right before going into work. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, that was an experience. Yeah, and yes. then of course the reading, um, like dropped like. Fortune, like I'm, like I have the week off, but of course the reading had to like coincide with um, figure skating worlds, and I was like, well, let's I just hope Brenda drops it during an ice resurfacing break so that I can read it because I was expecting like a chapter or two, not a full hour long reading. Three, three chapters, <laughs> not six chapters, the, not three, oh, uh, three chapters, but not one chapter. Not like the. Ten of like sunlit man when that it happened. wasn't a sunlit right. man amount, uh, <laughs> but I wasn't expecting an hour long reading, and of course it just didn't like work out like no. on the time. It was like during the last two groups, I was like, no, yeah, and then like, and this then... is already stressful enough. But thank God I had the reading afterwards yeah. to distract me from the disaster that has been world so far. <laughs> it just, I have such mixed feelings. And so Brad did like the reading and then the stream yesterday, as even if the stream wasn't good, have kept me distracted like so that I don't get it too in my mind about like good. screaming at the ISU. Yeah. yeah, there's plenty, there's plenty more to scream about because I think people people were thinking, oh, hi Cosmere connectivity. Uh maybe and very far along in the timeline, people got to like six of the dust sequel pretty easily. 
Mm-hmm. But then, you know, Brandon's been talking about dragons a lot. So it's like, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe dragon stuff. Uh, and the answer yeah. is you're, co- Bill well, correct. Is that you're, you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> why uh, not both? Why not both? Exactly. Ian, Ala, how are you? How, how are you guys doing? I don't have anywhere nearly as dramatic story. That's about fine. It. Yeah, I'm just, it's unfortunate because like this week I've been working second shift. So this dropped in the middle of my work, hmm. work day. So I just read it quickly after work and I was like, oh, this this is the six of the dust sequel. That's not what I was, I was expecting something like brand new from this. Mm. And then of course I got to the chapter, <laughs> a chapter when, you know, Firefly in the Cosmere. <laughs> And I was like, there's the high Cosmere connectivity. That's where we're from. You want some connectivity? Yeah. Like, it, it's good that he said that because uh, it is. Yeah. I, I will say I have some reservations about this book, but I'm overall quite interested to read it. Ian, how you doing? I'm doing okay, man. Uh, I, when it was first announced, I was like, you know, I like I wasn't expecting something this big, but we just may as well at this point. Like, sure, why not? I just great <laughs> going with it. Sure, I like I wasn't super excited. I wasn't not excited for it. And then we got it, and I was like, "Ooh, dragons!" Then you were very excited. <laughs> <laughs> my my emotions about this is dragons. I think that's a very fair way to say this for sure. Uh, there was there was a bunch of uh, six three one stuff, um, and I, I found that to be disappointing because it was it was just it's the six hundred thirty first video. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, okay. That's I, I will say that's the other thing. My emotions about this are dragons, and so why the heck six three one? Why? <laughs> like, like okay, it's it's your six hundred thirty first video, but they have full control over that. So they could have made it be any video that they wanted to. He dropped it at six six minutes and thirty one seconds in. Okay, again, he could have done that any time. There is nothing in here that explains why that number. Why? Nothing. So I'm like, it's got to be something in the book because otherwise, just Brandon, why? Why did you pick some random number? Yeah, my qualm with that, like, with all of the say the words, like the radiant order videos coming out, those being set in the sixth era, year thirty one, like. <laughs> That that has to be pointing at something more than just, oh, it's going to be my 631st video. Like, there's what else is going on? Yeah. Like, the, the video number seems like a convenient coincidence that they took advantage of. But making it the actual setting, like the time of the other Radiant Order videos, that was intentional. It, yeah. Uh, there has to that- be more. Having that be just like a clue to an entirely unrelated thing feels like, but those like kind of impacted like the whole sudden thing, right? Like, yeah. Like even if even if there's like nothing more there, I like there doesn't have to be another story with her or whatever. But like, it feels relevant. I don't know. I'm not sure the no- date numbering actually makes sense given the date numbering that we have in the books. But you know, whatever for mm-hmm. for the someone, for someone the went books. through it, didn't they? Like people like Joff and Argent were like looking at the whole date thing. Yeah, and that's why I'm convinced that they're like, mm, I don't know about that. But I don't know. <laughs> were they I, not? I trust Joff like implicitly for all timeline things because yeah. he knows yeah. the timeline only like straight under Karen. You know, he he <laughs> yeah. Uh. I thought you were going to say I trust Joff more than I trust Brandon. Well, I, okay, I, I don't mean, trust I Brandon mean, yes. for timeline things, but he yes. has people he hires to fix that. Like that that's that's not a bug, that's a feature, and that's fine. We okay. get more books. So that that's totally fine. That's a problem for revisions. So I have no issue with that. It's just just keep that in mind when Brandon just sometimes says just bonkers things on uh live streams that like, you know, maybe sometimes he's saying Oathbringer's an honor blade. <laughs> you know, maybe that's just <laughs> totally not true. <laughs> um, oh, we, we will be having full Cosmere spoilers as you'll, you'll, as you'll, you'll see why. By the way. It's, it's high Cosmere connectivity on this show today. <laughs> Un- unlike Brandon, we don't think that we can discuss this without, dis- yeah. without going into full Cosmere why spoilers. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the... Book is coming in 2025. Uh, Brandon needs to finish Stormlight. Then he's going to do a revision of this book. 
and then it'll be put into production and then it's got to, you know, go yeah. through all of that stuff. Uh, the artist seemed very nice on the stream. Uh, seems like she's yeah. going to be a great fit for this. So we re- yeah, really, really, like really enjoyed Esther on the stream. Like my favorite part. Yeah, for sure. Same, yeah. honestly. Like the, di- the diorama she brought out. Yeah, that was awesome. That was mm-hmm. Really and cool. Like, she even, like the fact that she made Vathi's outfit, like an actual version of Vathi's outfit, is kind kind of wild, honestly. That's that is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it is Six of the Dust too. But it's also it's not just Six of the Dust too, because it's also Six of the Dust <laughs> as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> Brandon yeah. has said that. He said when the chapters were coming out that he's done a revision of Six of the Dusk. But Peter has been commenting on Reddit and Peter said they're barely changed. They're like almost not changed at all. And <laughs> so they're they're very slightly yeah. changed. So I, I think some people on the forums and Discord were concerned that like, oh, is the original Six of the Dusk not canonical? And so it it's... Peter said it's basically the same, so I, I I don't really care if there's like my very minor things like that. Like I don't that doesn't bother me. Um, I I don't think it's going to be like the words of radiance ending mm-hmm. retcon. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think it's going to be like that at all. It's not going to be They're a not removing a stereo. <laughs> the blue box. Ah, oh, good. Ah, uh, welcome to the show, Steve. Uh, good to have you. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, you know, the the boombox will live forever in our hearts. Uh, go go watch our White Sand episodes. They're 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 quality entertainment, even they're if you great. haven't read White Sand. Are. Maybe even more if you haven't read White Sand. Hey, honestly, they're probably better. <laughs> they're probably better, to be honest. Uh, but I mean, why read White Sand? Just wait for when the prose comes out, right? Like, there's no, yeah. there's no point. The final total definite edition number five revised. You, you have to really wait for the tenth anniversary White Sand prose edition. That's really going to be the definitive one. Guys. <laughs> no, no, that's going to be the graphic audio adaptation of the tenth anniversary revised edited fifth edition edition. Great. <laughs> I'm curious what you all think about having Six of the Dusk be included in this. So the Brandon's intent, he said he didn't want you to have to read the novelette for this to make sense. I I think that's reasonable. Like, I think it's kind of a hard sell if people feel like they need to buy like Arcanum Unbounded to then enjoy this. Right. Like mm. or Shadows Beneath. Yeah. 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 I like the idea of like packaging Six the Dusk in. I think that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what I think about it being flashbacks, especially like yeah. flashbacks plural. I'm like, how are they going to chop it up? Like, yeah, just I'm like curious. with a pacing. I, I, I don't know if it's I, like, I'll, I guess we'll have to see. But I, I trust Brandon and Brandon's team. It does seem weird to take an existing story and chop it up and intersperse it into a new story and try and keep the same connectivity through it. Yeah, I know some people were thinking, well, why couldn't he have just done it like Edge Dancer, where Edge Dancer just starts with the lift interlude? Uh, like, why not just have that be the start of it? So uh, that'll be interesting because we haven't seen the flashbacks. That wasn't one of the readings, which good call. That would be really boring to do as a reading yeah. for this <laughs> if it's the same. Uh, but I, I do wish on the stream he talked a bit more about that process with the flashbacks yeah. and that. Like, that that was kind yeah. of one yeah. of the things that I wanted to hear him blab about. So... I mean, especially because chapter three is yeah. the post flashback scene that yeah, we got. That's what I'm yes. so curious about. Yeah, like how that, in the if world? That, if the, the entirety of Six of the Dusk flashbacks are going to be after chapter three, like you're starting with the end and then jumping, but like it, it seems really convoluted. Watch the flashbacks just be chapters one and two. You've just got two flashbacks right next to each other. (laughs) And that's how it starts. And then we just go straight into dusk. Like (laughs) Prologue, here's a dragon. Don't Don't, completely ignore the dragon. Ignore the dragon. (laughs) (laughs) And then we'll jump back to the dragon. We'll get to the dragon. Actually, speaking of which, I think like 
Brandon said that like the chapter 11 is the first like Starlink POV mm -hmm. after the right. prologue. So that we is will correct. be ignoring the dragons for like you, 10 you whole will chapters. be ignoring yeah. the dragons. Yes, correct. Yes. Like, are, are we sure that it's only two points of views here? So we're just going to have like, I love Dusk, don't get me wrong, but just straight Dusk for 10 chapters. Yeah. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder I how long say. those chapters are too. Because it's interesting because Brandon said he's been working on this for a long time and he has. He's talked about like he had an idea for a Sex of the Dust sequel and is writing it. And he said it didn't quite work until he added Starling uh, mm -hmm. into this and making it a dual POV. And so uh, that's, yeah, that's that's going to be interesting, yeah. I think. But so. yes, speaking of like the Six of the Dusk, I must say like or, original Six of the Dusk is like, the most boring Brandon story for me. <laughs> like I, I'm fighting I could her. not. There, there isn't much. Not much happens in it. It feels. I've always like in my head. It always felt more like just Brandon wanted to write about a setting, and the plot feels more like an excuse to espouse about what those islands are like. So, I mean, you're not wrong. I don't think you're yeah, wrong about that. That's oh, that's a completely yeah. fair critique. <laughs> yeah. So, these flashbacks, if we are lucky, these flashbacks will be the worst part of the book and everything else will be better. Yeah. I feel like splitting them through. I hope they aren't split like throughout the entire book because, like, yeah, I think that'd be bad. You know, yeah, it's like in, in Stormlight, the flashbacks build up to something, right? Because like in Way of Kings, the flashbacks build up to, you know, what happens with Tien. With, and here the flashbacks yeah. build up to, and then he went home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm also just like, how, how long is it? How many chapters can you possibly split this into? Yeah. Like, I mean, how many words is six? Three? Place? Let it's me like, check. Actually. Three chapters? I think it's like 17 Four K. the most? I think it's like 17 like, K. Drop it into uh, weird. Oh, well done. Yeah, 17, 794. I think I've looked this up before. And that's why I remember nice. this. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up a couple of things off the top of your head, remember? Yeah. Oh, see, yes. the word count is a 17th shard reference, much like Frost. Yeah, I'm sure that's what Brandon was thinking about with uh, when he was doing this ages ago when he did Shadows Beneath. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's why he's revising it. He's cutting it down to be exactly 17,000 words. Oh, yes. Remind me what he said. Didn't he say that he's going to tell, like, in the back... He will tell people what he's changed in the yes. flashbacks uh -huh. if yeah. you want to skip he didn't them. Say that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's fine. I'm sure it will be interesting to see, you know, what people think. I, I can imagine that people who have read Six of the Dusk will like it worse for Six of the Dusk being included. Yeah. I do think. Probably most Cosmere fans have not read Six of the Tusk, I'll be honest. <laughs> like, I feel like that's mm -hmm. probably accurate. And with like an official novel, just a lot more people are going to read it. So I think for the majority, I think including it is good. Uh, it is interesting to have it be flashbacks and not just be like, yeah, this is the, this is like part one or something. Right. But I, I think that's kind of the weirdest part about the announcement because he, he it's a novelization, but kind of not really because it's just the same but, thing, yeah. mostly. We could talk about Ember Dark. So Ember Dark is... It, Brandon was like, oh, it's a thing you've heard before. It's and before. like it, it's it's just a city in the Sea of Lost Lights. Uh, okay, yeah. that's, that's interesting. And he, he described the Ember Dark as being like the place between like known areas in Jadesmar, which the yeah. Sea of Lost Lights definitely is not that. <laughs> so like, yeah. OK, yeah. I don't know what's going on with that, especially it's just weird that Brandon's like, he he he. It's like this other thing that was on a map. I kind of wonder if this isn't something like maybe it's featured in Stormlight 5 or something. And that's why he yeah. like in his head, it's a bigger thing than it is to us because he wrote about it more recently. Maybe. 
Ah, yes. This Coppermind article mm. on Emberdark is a classic Eric Coppermind map location article where I go through. It's like, <laughs> this is here and it is adjacent to these other things also on this map. And that's it. That's the article. That it's, it's, not, it's not even mentioned in the text. It's just on a map. It's on two maps. <laughs> You, you don't even mention the like the Ember Dark channel or whatever it is like that is next to Ember Dark. Like, no, that's, it's in there. That's it's, its in the own... article. It's in the article. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's in there. It's in the second sentence. Don't worry, I got you. Oh, okay, okay. I'll allow it. Yeah. Oh, adjacent to the Ember. Okay, well done. <laughs> it's, a it's, it's, it's a complete article. It's complete. It contains everything article. we need to know. Reference. Yes. Um, but everything we know about this. I mean, it would have been time. back then. Yes. Yes. Well, at least in 2018. But so, yeah, I don't know if there's I don't think there's anything to discuss there. I think the only thing that makes sense is like the city was named after like the these areas between places in Shadesmar. Yeah, I maybe. guess. That, that's like reason. why we have a, a city on Earth named Interstellar Space, you know, because... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the thing is, I could see us having a city named that because Earth has some weird yeah, city I have names. Zero names. I love I going to Manhattan, Montana. It's my, it's one of my favorite places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's yeah. Idaho, you know. It, Townsville. Yeah, no, that's a place. Okay, I should point oh. out to you guys, while there isn't a town I can find called Interstellar Space, there is a town of Cosmos, Minnesota. That's that. See, that's a solid uh, name for for a small rural town. Like that's like that gets cosmos. tourists solely from the name of that. Like I, I went to the cosmos. This 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 yeah, this week's apparently... episode is sponsored by the tourism board of Cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the tourism board of this town with a total of five hundred and seven people. Hey, that's pretty right. good. That's pretty good for a small small rural town. You know, I've, I've been in smaller where it's a road and there's a bar at a post office and that's what you get. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's there were like I, I've been to like villages here where the, that are literally just two houses. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the saying in America is that it's not a town until there's a bar and a post office. And that, that, that's the requirement. <laughs> I, I should stop looking at Cosmos Minnesota's Wikipedia article or I'll just poke your ears off. Do you know they have an annual space festival there? I mean, I should I'm, 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 you know, I'm actually really happy to hear that. That's good. I, I like that. Um, it's not actually about space. They play volleyball. Oh, oh okay. That's that's more disappointing. What? Are the planets like, or are, are, is the ball? Are the balls like painted mean, like planets? Yeah, that would be, yeah, like, that'd be hilarious. I, I already closed the article or else I would spend like the next 15 minutes there. This this is the hard hitting analysis that you want on this show. I, I know that's what you're, you're, you came here for. Um, you all came here for the city of Cosmos. Yes. Yes. Say hi in the comments. Oh, if you are from yes. 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 If you are listening yes. from Cosmos, you are from Minnesota, Cosmos Minnesota, Minnesota have ever lived there, I want to hear below <laughs> for sure. If, if you've driven through and missed it because you blinked, let us know. <laughs> yes. yes. That is how those small towns go. Before we get into the extremely exciting chapters, uh, mm -hmm. do we have any other stuff about the just the crowdfunding campaign on things? I could hear you. I could hear you about to say Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's just it's just it's it's painful. You know, you know, if we say Kickstarter enough, we genericize it and then back our kick and use it. Think about that. Clearly, this isn't a mistake. This is just our mission now. <laughs> it's our mission. Yes, exactly. It's a campaign. It's a they campaign. It, it's like the it, way of kings. Uh, they, you, you can pick an order. Uh, the prices are higher now <laughs> for getting everything. Because I was surprised the, the audio book wasn't part of so many of the tiers. Yeah, that was a little weird. I think they said it like it would have inflated the cost and they didn't want people to like have to to buy in, but I'm like isn't it only like 10 or 15 bucks? It's, it's 15 bucks, yeah. I feel like you could have thrown that in, but I don't know. Yeah. I feel like the the only know. reason is because since it's going to actually be on Audible, they're letting people buy it with credits that they have. 
if you're going to get all the things, why not just get the audiobook and then be able to use your Audible credits for other things? Like, yeah, it, it feels weird that the audiobook wasn't part of more than two tiers. I would really love to know the business decision making because it does not make any sense to me as to really why. Like, I'm not surprised that if like Audible had some hand in that yeah, because maybe. of the new agreement. Like, that's what sounds the most plausible to me. Oh, yeah. You, you should all go you read so Veronica's lovely Brandon. article about the history of oh, yeah. Audible <laughs> and, uh, and what's going on with things. But Brandon got a new yeah. deal with Audible and the secret projects are going back to Audible. So that's good. Well, let, let's just say Spotify's right. uh, terms of service, <laughs> not not necessarily great. So, you know, mm. yeah. corporations, they suck. There, there were plushies as well, which I was very excited oh, yeah. for, offering. and I, I think I'm not getting any. I think I think I'm not getting any of the plushies. I think they're if just I okay. had randomly four hundred dollars that I didn't know what to do with, I would get all of them. But that's just for like the the collector inside of me that wants all of the things. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's a lot. I, I spent $1,500 yeah. at Dragon Steel, so I'm good. I, I don't want to collect more things. Yeah, oh. that's not a joke. You, go 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 to our unboxing I, I and support our Patreon, please. Yeah. Uh, no, not really. It doesn't. Yeah. I'm like, I, I want to like them. I was excited about them. I'm not sure if I'm totally in love with all of their designs. I, 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 mean, I don't know what it is like, but that I don't like about them. I like the designs like when they showed up on the Say the Words videos, right? Yeah, those are good. And when in 2D, they look amazing and the pins look amazing. The pins are going to be great, yeah. Says yeah. a lot about like the designs mm -hmm. themselves. Like, I really like those. I just like the execution. I'm curious about it because they seem like more like flat. I don't know, the hair detail. The, there are things about mm -hmm. it that I'm like. They're also just mm -hmm. like really tall. They're huge, yeah. Like, oh. I don't, like, I can see that being a bonus, but, like, I just kind of want to put one on a bookcase, and if they're too big, then, like, what am I going to do with it? You know? I don't know. If if them being smaller made them a little cheaper, I would be cool with that. Yeah. As it is, I'm like, if I buy a plushie, I want to, like, have it be a plushie and not just a display item personally i want to be able to like mm -hmm. hug that thing i don't know sure and these just do not seem like Hug very hug cuddly huggable yeah. yeah yeah like like some of the designs are cool like i thought Stormfather and window looked pretty cool mm -hmm. i i wasn't planning to get those uh those weren't the ones that we added and the ones we added uh like the high spread and 2d versus high spread and 3d i I think, Ian, you're a big, you, you, you like the high spread plushie. I, well, see, see, I was really excited about the high spread plushie, and then I got mildly disappointed by the high spread plushie. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that was, that I, was, that I, was I, I like the, I like the hair. Oh, I, I I'm cool with the hair, where a lot of people didn't like the hair, I'm cool with that. I, I don't like how it just looks, like, the material does not look like it is soft, I don't know. I'm happy to save money. Uh, and if you like them, that's great. And like, I'm glad they're iterating on these things. And that's good. Uh, more more practice them designing plushies is uh, all great. Uh, but and otherwise, there's there's words of ratings on the brown. Like you, it, it's yeah. it's all the same stuff. There's there's swag for each order. You know, cool. The charms is an interesting choice. Like, I didn't think charms yeah. were a thing still. Like no, no one's going around wearing charm bracelets anymore. Like that's they're, they're playing so, the long game that like five years. Oh, they're all going to be back. Be they're going to come be. They'll be a collector's item by then. The charm bracelets people are wearing are like Pandora bracelets that those have like custom made charms. Like they are have to be a specific size. Actually, my I mean I'm not wearing it right now because I forgot. But I'd originally wondered if the like Malthus charm from the Dolly Jewelry could work mm. uh, for mine it didn't which is why i just mm. put the chain through it it's like not the size of the regular necklaces sure so i don't know what they're doing with the charms they're very pretty i like like the mock-up images they had for those packs but i don't know yeah 
I, I did not go all in this time. I did for Way of Kings, but uh, I did not do that this time. So I have too much swag that I don't know what to do with. So uh, we'll, we'll just leave it there. Uh, but That's they, they did have license plate holders, and those are cool. I, uh, we bought two mm-hmm. of them. Uh, so those are, those are good. For those of you who drive in America, uh, <laughs> they're good. So, I, I did go all in simply because I love coins. And I'm like, sure. I'm, I, I want those coins. I don't know what I'm going to do with the charms, but I really want the coins. I'm oh. sure Dragonwood Shop will make a beautiful display for you to store yeah. them. Uh, it's probably, but that's, that's going to well. be even more money. <laughs> like, oh, though, didn't their license expire or am I? Well, that was for the yeah. last coins, but like, I'm sure she'll make some other sort she, of display. She, yeah. she can do custom stuff. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah for, for the the coins for the Way of Kings thing. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm sure there can be some other thing. Cool. Let's get in to talking about Isles of the Ember Dark with yes. my new favorite character. And I think <laughs> lots of other people's new favorite character as well. So yeah. I think I think there's going to be a lot of competition. Let's talk about Starling. Let's talk. Let's start yeah. with the prologue. This explains so much <laughs> about all of Brandon's answers recently it, with all the dragon <laughs> stuff. Yeah. 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 You, you you liked when Brandon just dumped on you in particular a bunch of dragon yeah, lore, Veronica. I, <laughs> hey, I, 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 I like I don't even remember what question it was. It was like Zeiss's um, research, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was talking with like Zeiss's research, and then he just dropped like dragon palaces and silver light and <laughs> what do you yeah, yeah, like, the dragon did. palaces? They're right here. They're right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so surreal to get that. <laughs> that was a crazy moment on uh, in the Brandon interview for sure because you you like, like just a of a read and find out it's just yeah it, it's 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 clearly <laughs> yeah. one of those things where brandon has now determined this is how it works i know how it works i've written it i'm excited uh mm-hmm. because like honestly he even does this for stormlight he's like i mean yeah the vet is an oath ringer you'll see i'm like why would you say that <laughs> like just shut up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like i don't know why you would say that he just but randomly like he did it in a Reddit tell. comment for someone who's like, where's Vivenna? And he's like, ah, you'll I see mean, it, Oath Bringer. Like, the Vivenna I... comment was a weird one. But you can't tell, like, even with other, even, like, unpublished writers, that answers will be so much more specific and detailed, like, when you ask them something. Like, you'll see oh, this yeah. in our writing prompts, oh, like, yeah. on Fridays with things. Like, some people go crazy and some people are like, I haven't figured it out. I'm one of those people. I have there's so many things that happen well, once you figure it out <laughs> and once you figure it out it's like yeah but brandon did this with saying. aethers as well right mm-hmm. where brandon like talked about aethers and then we got both dress and lost metal it's like ah yes i see how you yes hmm. so if you ever see wobs where brandon just goes on a very long tangent about something very specific that we've never seen before i'm just gonna <laughs> assume there's a secret project that he wrote like it, Something's and, coming up. Yeah. And he did say he wrote this for like seven years. So like it doesn't need to be yeah. soon, but clearly he could write it enough where he's like, yeah, yeah, I know it's up there. I'll, I'll figure out what's going on with the book at some point. Yeah. So we get Yolin. It's not destroyed. It exists because uh, this is this is not pre shattering. This is only 57 right. years ago from, I guess, wherever the modern no, Six like, of the Dust story. Like, not Six of the Dust, but yeah. the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon said this is like way post way post, post shattering. Yeah. This is like fairly modern Yolin. Yolin, it so, exists. So Yolin isn't, like, it. not only is Yolin not exploded, yes, but dragons are still actively procreating. Mm-hmm. Yes. On yes, Yolin, yeah. Correct. And they still yeah. have dragon and they, palaces and they still take prayers from people in Yolan. Like, oh, yep. interesting. With Tamukex. With Tamukex. And like, there's still like forests and stuff. Though, so I guess we don't know if like the those are like fane forests or regular no, variety forests. No mention of fane other than the fane wood throne that fane, Frost yeah. was on. Um, I mean, would. We- Okay, but like, if if the fine forests were like normal for her, wouldn't Starling just say forests instead of fine forests? Yeah, I guess I would just think like if she's albino, right? Wouldn't would she like make some reference that like the forests are all white? I don't know. Like maybe that would be a thing in particular that she would think about more. I don't know. 
in, in my in my brain that makes sense but yeah no because it does it even say that the forest no it just says rolling forest it doesn't say that they're uh -huh. green yeah, right. we, it's just forest we went to just Yolan, but we did not actually learn much about Yolan. no we not, at all. Done it around. <laughs> not at all <laughs> other than Later in the book palaces. yep so clearly frost has lived for a really long time and he's just like he's just he's just a dude uh, uh and he's I mean, so nice he's so nice He's so like the grandpa. biggest dad vibes. He's probably had dad, something grandpa, to do with the shadow. Uncle vibes. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting that he like talks about like Ada Nalsium's wisdom for like the dragon's life uh, life cycle and stuff. Mm -hmm. Later, we'll see uh, Starling swears by shards, which is interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Those swear. strike me as like cultural things totally. more than necessarily like. World I don't know, Frost, that, like, believes it is specifically actually an Anonsium's wisdom. I mean, Frost was that. alive pre-Shattering, so, yeah, like, I, know, I don't know. I, I know, yeah. I know, I know, like, he believes in Anonsium. I just don't know if he, like, be like, believes that there is wisdom involved in this specific thing, or if it's just, like, this Same. is what we say. Sure. A dragon colloquialism. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just interesting that the dragons seem, like, at least from that dialogue, pro Aiden Alcium. That said, Frost is a little biased, and he thinks the shattering was a yes. bad idea. I think so. Maybe yeah. that you can't generalize that to all dragons mm -hmm. here. Yeah, so. maybe like if there is any like faction among dragons that's super pro Aiden Alcium, that's probably Frost. It's gonna be yeah, Frost. Sure, 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 sure. Speaking of dragon palaces. The dragon palaces are both like they've got some that's human sized, and then they've mm -hmm. got parts that are dragon sized. Oh, yeah. Which is cool. God. Oh, it's so cool. I what, can't wait to see art for those. Like, can we please? Yes. Oh, yeah. Is it, like, yeah, the let's scale get some against each art. other. Yeah. Oh, that's good so stuff. Good. Also, one other thing is I, lo I like this line. She knew that some, unlike her uncle, saw her albinism as a flaw, a sign of misfortune proven by what happened to her parents. So I will just point out quickly that this is like a thing in some cultures, like in real life, where albinism is seen as just a, a sign of like misfortune or bad yeah, omen. Yeah, that's true. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm deeply interested to hear what happened to her parents, though. Yeah. That, that, yeah. yeah, that's the more yeah. important part. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> what happened to one of Frost's siblings? How many siblings does Frost have? Like, yeah. if dragons are immortal, like, like how many dragons are there, you know? And mm -hmm. Like, how, how many nieces and nephews does Frost have? <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know. Man, family trees must be crazy because they I live know. for so long. Yeah. That means like children can have children at the same time other dragons are continuing to have children. Oh like, my god! Th yeah, like it's awesome. There's it's reminding me of like the one dia family tree, and I do not want to think of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's like a non-zero chance that like Frost siblings, like Starling's parents, could be several thousand years younger than the older brother oh. of whichever one of them is related. Yeah. Just, just think how many different kids the Lord Ruler could have <laughs> <laughs> over a thousand years. Like, Lord just Lord think about it. Come up. Oh, are we, are we bringing just all the shard memes today? I, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't help it. Children. An immortal having kids. I'm just like, I just thought about the Lord Ruler <laughs> and his there. kids, which is still really dumb that he did that. Yeah. But like, I don't know. He's, he's a flawed guy, yeah. I guess. Eric, Eric just sees immortal and children, and he just. I do. I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Replace me with a soundboard. That's fine. Like you, you can do the intro there. Lord Ruler's kids, you know. Badamishram there. See, see. I think. Speaking of Badamishram. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Just very short thing. I think the reason why everyone thinks of me with Badamishram is because no one cared during Oathbringer, and I did. But see, mm -hmm. everyone's gonna like Starling, and so we're all we're all gonna have to fight over how great Starling is. Um, so yeah, the fight over the number one Starling fan username. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Whereas, whereas Bad Mishram, like she she can destroy me anytime. Like I'm I'm in. <laughs> I I will say like 
I like Starling a lot, and I expect to continue liking her. I'm not, like, head over heels about her yet. I'm kind of like, okay, keep on winning me over. I mean, as an eight-year-old, she's adorable. Like, as an adult, I'm kind of like, okay, let's let's see some more of you. I have nothing okay. against her. I'm just kind of, like, waiting, I guess. Mm, okay. I'm similar feelings so far. Interesting. Child adorable, though. Yeah. I guess so. If, if, you, if you don't think the child is adorable, that's also valid. I find reading like child POVs can be annoying, but I didn't have that problem here. Uh, probably because it's like, oh my God, she's a dragon. And, then like I, and so like I didn't have time to be annoyed. And also, yeah. it's so cute that she's like, I get to transform. Like that, that's awesome. I know. That's so cute and cool. So be like adorable. That. I get a thirty-year-old baby. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> <laughs> just a baby. <laughs> it's like Frodo. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> didn't, there we go. Didn't Hobbits know. are actually <laughs> dragons. You know, <laughs> get some secret secret dragons in there. Yeah, easy. There, there's some. There, I'm sure there's fanfics like that. Let, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Bilbo, Bilbo was actually, actually a dragon yeah. shipping with smog. All right, cool. We don't, we don't need to go down that line of <laughs> You You went shipping. I just went family relations. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, Listen, you made shipping romantic. can eventually lead to family relations. It's true. That's a fair point. <laughs> Anything else on the prologue, guys? <laughs> uh, I'm excited about Frost. Yes. I like him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, okay, speaking of Frost and... His family. Like, if we don't learn at least one new fact about the seventeenth shard, I would. <laughs> I don't know how. Like, I doubt it's very likely. But one thing, just one tiny fact. I mean, please, Brandon. They can't be I don't that niche. It, but I hope so. They can't be that niche. I feel like one fact is reasonable. This is like, listen. This is Cosmere's most ineffective faction. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Frost. Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot. <laughs> The Sons of Honor exist? That That's a good point. Uh, that's a good whoa. point. That, I mean, they did... The okay, Sons of Honor actually like, did things, though. They, they like, stole stole town for a time, and, like... Yeah! <laughs> what, whatever Gavilar is doing with the Void Light or something. Uh, like, yeah. that's they something. They had influence on the plot, at least. <laughs> I mean, the Fair. Shot, what did Seventeen Shot accomplish? They introduced the flu... <laughs> Yeah, they brought a plague. <laughs> and then nothing Bro- happened oh. with the plague. The plague was just <laughs> stopped being a plot point. Can, we, we need to make a, a tier list video of Cosmere Secret Societies. <laughs> and 17 Shard is just like F tier. Yeah, C tier? C tier? I don't know about that. I think Sons of Honor might be C or D tier. Uh, true. True. Z. I mean, Z like oh, zombie. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> accents they'll get you but before we move on i am curious uh when starling transforms Mm -hmm. does she stay the same size no because it doesn't say she gets bigger it just says she gets wings and scales uh sure um now you do wonder how dragons are baby dragons like just human sized but dragon shaped and then they, they grow as grow they bigger in their maybe form. Adorable. That would be. I could see either way. Like, yeah. I could I could see the self that had been hidden in her emerged glorious and radiant. And kind of has vibes of like a big dragon coming yeah. out to me. Mm-hmm. But like, I love your face. <laughs> but like, I I could I could see it going either way. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I think like Brandon like talked about in one of his many dragon wobs that <laughs> dragons have like different sizes so uh-huh. yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like like some dragons are like the size of like the sandlings on Taldane and some are smaller and yeah. some are bigger so oh, yeah. but weren't that's, those the lesser like dragons though types. yeah those are the lesser dragons yeah yeah, yeah not the like i thought yeah. i thought he meant that about like all the dragons mm, i don't <laughs> think so i think there's like the lesser dragons that aren't sapient i would at least assume that she is much bigger in dragon form. She waited 30 years. I I think it's 
at least bigger. I I, I think. Like, I, I would assume like at least like like max like adult human size dragon, mm-hmm. like just larger than an eight year old girl. I don't know. I I the maybe not. Yeah, I I I think she's big, but I mean, look, the dragon steals capitalized. Metal names aren't supposed to be capitalized, so like this 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 mm-hmm. needs revision. So you just gotta like. <laughs> Oh, We're going to so talk about back. a capital prosperity <laughs> here uh, later. No, and uh, I'm oh. like, I don't think that is anything. I don't think that is anything either. I think that's just Brandon being weird with capitalization. Like, <laughs> oh, Brandon yeah. sometimes just capitalizes metal names, and sometimes in like lost metal early drafts, he doesn't capitalize Alamancy, which definitely should be capitalized. So, you know, like, just, just keep that in mind. Uh, but. We will talk about prosperity. We will talk about that. But yeah, no, I, I think she's probably bigger because it just seems like if the dragon mm-hmm. sizes are like giant building sizes that she's got to be like pretty big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. E- enough to like fly up to the thing like <laughs> frost dragon form is going to be like huge like Zeisus was in Tress. Yeah, and I so, feel like maybe but they're older. Um, like maybe Starling like- could be like I mean, for transformation, maybe like pony size at the smallest, <laughs> but just like probably like horse size and okay. then like girl like too huge. Okay, I don't sure. know. That feels reasonable to me. Yeah, I, I do agree that like they don't they get like a pro- huge size from the beginning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She probably like just doesn't start out being already like adult dragon sized. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Let us go on to chapter three now. Uh, We've actually already gotten a reading of this, if you don't remember, uh, which I think a lot of you didn't. We did an episode on this quite some time ago, uh, and so I'll put a card here and I'll put it in the description that uh, this was the Six of the Dust 2 reading. It was this chapter, although... so wild at the time. I mean, it's still wild. It's It's still wild. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's, it's still strange, strange, but it's like, oh, yeah, we already know all of it, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah shard gun, yeah, it's whatever. It's so different. <laughs> this, this version started slightly earlier it than did. that one, and then mm-hmm. ended also slightly earlier. We got more in in the last reading. Yeah. That I expect will probably have made it into the into this book. Yeah, so. maybe he's just trying to cut down on the thing. Maybe, maybe he's adjusted some scenes around. I don't know. It's hard, hard to say, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But I, I can imagine that that previous one was like an earlier draft because I, I was comparing mm-hmm. the two and like he does There's this description issues, yeah. of like the ones above and I was like, oh, I thought they were these faint creatures and we get that kind of like earlier. Uh, so like the same yeah, phrasings it's, it's, there, it's just yeah. differently placed. So I don't know how much we want to get into that. So what, what, what are some thoughts and feels? I, I know we talked a lot about this before with the Rosharan and stuff. Uh but I don't think you guys were talking on that episode, so. I I don't think I any of like, us were staff on that episode. Yeah, or maybe I was. No. I wasn't there. No, I, you weren't there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to talk about the Rosharan. Yeah, go the, for the, it. The, sure. The, the Skybreaker friend who is unnamed, yeah. yes. because of course. Yeah, I just want to say, Brandon only knows how to write two Skybreaker characters. He yeah. only knows how to write Zeph and he only knows how to write Nail, which is a bit of a problem when the story has a lot more Skybreakers. <laughs> yeah. They're so just like Odium's any... mind slaves, uh, Rasar. Like, I don't, I don't see what the um, problem is. Yeah. <laughs> Every Skybreaker who isn't Zeph is Nail, just as far as Brandon <laughs> is concerned. It like, is even stupid. here, we are like th- pros- Hundreds to thousands of years after events of the Stormlight Archive, yeah. and still the only still Skybreaker we see is a nail. It's a nail, a nail clone. They're all just yeah. like evil people who only care about using the law at their own ends. And I'm like, no, screw this. Give us good Skybreakers, well, Brandon. I'm like, uh, yeah. like Brandon's like the, the whole like pirate code thing. Why haven't we got in a Skybreaker like a pirate that? code? Skybreaker who cares yeah. about literally anything else besides the law. I mean, he's yeah. a singer. I mean, that's cool. You, you have to yeah, consider that though cool. that if you go to any hardware store, nails are mass produced. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I, easy. It's just like Follows. we we all know that like when it comes to radiant orders, like I Brandon said, in this 
we we all know who's Brandon's favorite child oh, and who's even, least favorite when it comes even, to like, the with, orders. Um, Alamancers and Ferrochemists. Yes. Well, though the coin shots are Brandon's favorite. Yes, like, yes, Brandon's absolutely. favorites are always the ones that can fly. Except the Skybreakers can yes. fly, and for some reason they're not his favorites. But yeah, because whatever. listen, because Windrunners need an evil counterpart because that's what right. always happens in like superhero movies. And Stormlight is clearly a superhero story. Don't ask me. I mean, kind so of. they always need an evil counterpart, and that's why we have Skybreakers. And no, oh, that's why we have Moash. <laughs> Skybreakers okay, just bizarro. Okay, Windrunners. but like Moash should have you, been a Skybreaker. Can, According to Brandon, you can never have too many evil counterparts. Moash should have been a Skybreaker. That's another like point to, to be like, pretty good. Justice, that would actually be pretty justice good. for Moash, justice for Skybreakers. Yes, but Brandon yeah. cannot write a skybreaker that isn't Zeph or Nail, and it irritates me to no end. <laughs> Deeply disappointing. Deeply yeah. pissing me off. Yeah. Coming after you, Brandon. Brandon did say this is the only Rosharn in the book. I think. Which is cool. Uh, I wonder like... if he'll ever get a name, or he'll, he'll just be skybreaker friend forever. Yeah, yeah, that's the Coppermine article name. No, it's not. Don't put don't d- listeners don't put that in there. <laughs> Stuff Shard before Gunman. the book comes out is not allowed on the copper mind. Uh, you, you don't you don't have to put it in there because I'm a keeper and I can put it there myself. That's true. You can't. Like you can. <laughs> oh no. So I I all hear what you're saying there. I'll I'll just say it's interesting. Like presumably, it's either a skybreaker or windrunner because they can lash, so they can go across. Yeah space or whatever um yeah presumably they're maybe doing the same thing that like starling's effectively doing where they're like going through shade smart and like not literally going I'm, in interstellar space with lashings like i, mean, I don't know about I, that my, my assumption, travel time my assumption was that like he came in a spaceship that's like in orbit and he just jumped out sure. like in orbit and he didn't actually go all the way like from rosharo or whatever planet they have colonized in the meanwhile i don't know if a ship because probably the skadrians would know about the ship whereas i think it's easier if it's just like but like i see i I imagine he's based somewhere nearby Mm -hmm. right like there's some rosharin base or something or at least like there's there's a team yeah like he's got an else color friend yeah sure Sure. yeah sure yeah We'll, we'll we'll see more skadrians brandon said in the book uh and i think this rosharin's role is to show, uh, unlike from our Sunlit Man episodes, where some people were all very anti skadrial that don't worry the Rosharans can be dicks too. So, you know, they, they can yeah. also be awful. Um, I, I do wonder, all like... world offers just suck. Yep. Like, this is, this is the only Roshar in the book. I wonder if we'll get any more of him, actually. Yeah. Like, or if he's just gonna be a fret looming in the background. Because, like, maybe Brandon can turn it around and make him less than a nail clone, but... Or more than a, yeah. more than just a nail clone. I don't have high hopes. He did I say the book's not about hope. them, so... And honestly, I am kind of worried about, like, the colonialism theme going on, because it's complicated, and I don't know if Brandon is gonna write it with no... Brandon, the I, noted... I, I am worried. Brandon, the noted <laughs> master of social commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, very afraid. A lot. Not gonna lie. Uh, it it is going to be interesting because uh, thus far, from what we've seen, uh, the Rosharan and Skadrians, like at least now that we've read Sunlit Man, we know oh the Skadrians can be real bad. <laughs> it's like oh okay, interesting. There's the time tellers in Sunlit Man. Like, I, I don't... Who knows how unified or disunified uh, Skadriel is? Uh, it mm-hmm. seems like there's a lot going on. And I would imagine Roshar equally has a lot going on. Like, how many magic systems do we have? Uh, plenty. So, you know, there, there could be a lot going on here. Uh, maybe, maybe these are, like, evil skybreakers and maybe there's like more normal radiance because like it's but like he did have the like the radiant cliff i don't know it's weird you know it's gonna be really funny if like 
Mistborn books are all about preserving Skadrial and Roshar books are and Stormlight books are all about preserving Roshar. And then we get to like the space agent turns out that both those societies we got invested into the survival of just suck now. Yeah, I I feel like we're we're gonna get a lot of complexity of a lot of people from a lot of different points of view. Um I hope so. Like I, I, I so. think Brandon would be aware that obviously people are kind of a fans of like, you know, the mm-hmm. northern part of Skadriel and stuff. And you know, yeah, Alefkar but- has problems, but like our main characters are Alefi and we 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 like the uh, the Alefi and and things and we like our main characters so i feel like brandon does have to walk that line uh but i am really excited for like an interstellar war that does sound awesome between the two like give me that that sounds amazing so like it could be just not just two factions not an interstellar war because like we specifically got called out like three different spacefaring technologies in the Mm -hmm. In the oh, that's true. Oh. With, like, with like the Aether yeah, stuff, the Daughtry. Yeah, yeah, because like there are at least three like spacefaring traditions in the cosmos. Like we have Skadrians, we have Rosharans, and we have the uh, what was their name? Daughtry. 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 Yeah. Daughtry. That would be say. interesting. Daughtry. I haven't thought about them being like just as much of a superpower as the others. Yeah, and because like they haven't been introduced as much. And it makes me wonder. Like with Cell, right? Like yeah, Cell could exactly be really important. Like, where is Cell going in all this? Are they the Switzerland? <sighs> Are they another superpower? I mean, Cell, oh, Cell's I mean, a big planet. But, it's got a lot of stuff, and the Irie yeah. are clearly important. And Brandon wants to We've write those rocket with... ships. Like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Right, exactly. Like Cell, to me, just if I imagine it, it seems to me like the sort of place that would be very easy to defend, but not very easy to ex- for them to expand. That is probably true. Yeah. yeah. It's, it is very defendable. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like the Switzerland comparison may be very apt actually here. Yeah. The land trains are just so powerful and can do yeah, so much all so on their powerful. own that just, they don't even need to go out and conquer the world. They can just like yeah. Honestly, create yeah. anything that they want at home. It, it's just interesting because Brandon wants to write the Elantra sequels like interspersed After, with Era Three. Concurrently with Era so Three, yeah. that does make me feel like there's there. He's going somewhere with them, right? Uh, yeah. So Maybe, that yeah. that's interesting. But yeah, all the Aether stuff is very interesting. We'll talk about that more in Chapter Eleven, right? Roshar and Skadriel, That might be the main thrust of the conflict, right? Like I I think Era Four. We will get some Skadrian POVs. We'll get some Rosharan POVs because that's like end yeah. of Cosmere stuff. And I imagine we're going to this. Presumably, this is like prelude to the Grand War. So. Like maybe mm-hmm. this is like Cold War ish stage. And like Era 4 mm-hmm. is like, oh, yeah. And then it's all out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which is going to be. Yeah, awesome. it's, it, it's not going to stay Cold War forever. That's no, for sure. absolutely not. Especially because, you know, there's shards involved. And so the spaceships plus shard battles, that's what I want in my life so bad. It's going to be amazing. Uh, But Brandon does need to walk the tight line, right, of how cool space opera stuff is. And also, uh, hey, you know, like, uh, colonial space empire is also kind Uh, of uh, challenging to deal with. So I hope, I sincerely hope he gets betas from, like, countries with, like, histories of, like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like recent history because I mean for us it's been 200 years you don't feel it much nowadays but there are there are countries that it's been like less than 100 um, like recent history of colonialism and I dearly hope Brandon gets betas from those countries because they'll be much more aware of like how that affects things because I am worried <laughs> it does seem like yeah. that's what this is about right with like an independent mm-hmm. nation trying to walk those lines so kind of seems like that's what this is doing what else is in here uh ones above have machines that could sense uh, life i don't sure that seems we, fine that's not new we yeah. saw that last time yeah, yeah. cool yep. uh one thing yeah. we didn't see last so can every other power ever yeah yeah i mean <laughs> yeah pretty much right like that could just literally be seeking it could be some nalpian thing whatever like there's so many ways to do that 
that, that see that's the cool stuff about cosmere stuff where like i don't even need an explanation for what that is i'm like yeah sure that makes sense you know <laughs> i don't even need to know brandon does have vafi say to prosperity uh and prosperity is capitalized um many people saying that that is potentially the last shard thoughts that surprises me. I think that's just Brandon screwing up capitalization. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, they, like, I, maybe, but it doesn't feel very shardy, honestly. Oh, like a green yeah, shard yeah. or like avarice would be really cool, though. I, I think that'd be a sweet shard name, right? I feel I, I'm not I'm disinclined to think this is a shard name because like we've been I'm pretty in, invested, huh? <laughs> invested in like <laughs> the, the final this the final shard being yes. something wisdom related. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. That too. That is true. And also, and like, just kind of in, in the way that, like, we're building up to the... Like, this is the last one. I don't think Brandon would just <laughs> drop it like that, I guess. I mean, who would I mean, ever just didn't... randomly drop a shard in sample chapters? <laughs> he, he didn't do that. that with okay. you, but, just but, made but, but he made it five of them. Yeah. <laughs> She made did make it very it clear, clear that it in is virtuosity. virtuosity. Yeah, yeah. It was like there was a whole focus on it. I don't think he would do it like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Th this feels more like toasting to a concept, not yeah. necessarily yeah, yeah, to yeah, an yeah. entity. It really feels like that. Uh, so, Steve, you you had one more chapter three thing. The, I I noticed that because I I actually quite enjoyed Six of the Dusk. Okay, and so getting more Get of it was like, oh, this will be fun. I I have tried to dig in as deep as I could on the information we have on all of the AVRs. Okay. And with this, with chapter three, we actually get a new AVR ability that has not been seen before. Third of Waves, the company medical vice president, who has a bright red AVR that let him see colors invisible to everyone else. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. that, that's an AVR ability that we have not seen. The, the only other like red AVR that we've seen is on roshar that lift now has it's true so, well, that lift, is interesting is does lift it, now able to see other weird colors that nobody else can see does it relate it to their like species it, the birds it's usually yeah yeah oh. the various species have the their own distinct abilities okay uh yeah i didn't remember that part and what i'm guessing that this is is like the perfect color differentiation yeah. that nalfians get instead of like whole entire new colors maybe it's just or if it is it's like colors that what, other like animals can see second heightening or for whatever the heightening is yeah what, whatever yeah. that one is yeah that seems like the most likely yeah that yeah. seems like yeah. an yeah. ADR thing to do it that makes like sense but just color. seeing yeah yeah look like, brandon has a lot of avr uh some might be useful some might be not yeah, very but like useful if, if this is like the the avr of the same species that lift gets that like Congratulations, you have a new power. Seeing more colors? I mean, does Lift what? need that many new powers? <laughs> I mean, no, but that feels like kind of a window dressing of a power. No, fair. It, it just seems like <laughs> it, an it's interesting... Changing the, mm -hmm. it, it changes the, the HUD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost <laughs> upgraded the, the software. It's an interesting AVR for our good fair chemist friend, Gary. It's not named Gary, uh, but Gara, right? Uh, yeah. Who I like to call Gary. I'm sure that AVR is useful for mm. something. I think there's room for like there being like different red AVRs. So maybe it's not like exactly yeah, yeah. the same, same, potentially. Like so, Lyft could have like some different ability or something. Um, right. But it is fun to officially get another canonized AVR ability. Because yeah. yeah. Brandon's been really cagey about those so far. Yeah, very true. Cool. Should we get to chapter 11? Okay, chapter 11 time. <laughs> All right. So, so like chapter three, that's that's great. I mean, we have seen it before. So cool. But like, I, I feel like I'm the boyfriend in the distracted boyfriend meme. Of like, yeah, okay, there's Skadrian <laughs> Roshar conflict. Yeah, I don't care about that. And then I'm just like, ooh, Cosmere Firefly. Ah, I'm into that. <laughs> I'm very interested. <laughs> where, where, where do you even want to start here? <laughs> I don't know. There's so much. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't know Firefly. All I know is it's like some sci-fi no, show. I don't, I don't know if I love the like 
tiny cramped spaceship vibes, but I I am excited about like basically everything on that spaceship and about like, excited about all of the people and about where we're going and like the vibes are okay. You're on a ramshackle ship and you're doing stuff and it. It's like, ooh, it's got these found family vibes where every member of the crew's wacky and every member of the crew's completely wacky here. <laughs> like, yeah. is that is the case. We yeah. are kidding. <laughs> maybe, maybe let's just go through the crew that yeah. we know. I think that's the best place to start. I think, I think we actually got like every member of this crew is of a different species, not just because like we have ghosts. Everyone that we've seen, yeah. Yeah, everyone's seen. You know, we've got a ghost, which I guess you know counts as a shame. human technically, but ghost. Sure, sure. We have a dragon. Yep. We have a, <laughs> an actual living human. Yeah. Who's an aether bound? Who is bonded yeah. to an aether? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Or who was bonded uh, to an aether at yep. least? Yep. We have a, a feathered person. Yeah, uh, that's not a different species. The feathered people are still humans. I, <laughs> yeah. We got. We got to uh, talk about that because that's so uh, weird. <laughs> Okay, we we will talk about that. Good old Larnarks. <laughs> and we have a sleepless. And we have a sleepless. Oh, yeah, that's sleepless. right. Mm-hmm. And the captain and who was a question uh, mark. A captain, and there's and, a pilot. And a captain. Yeah. There's a captain. And what? There's a pilot. Sorry, you said a captain. captain. The pilot. Yeah. Okay, there's a pilot. Yeah, named Leonor. I did, yeah. I did right. see some people speculating <laughs> that the captain might be Crow from oh, Crash. Interesting Southern. idea. I know. What, what do you guys think about that? Oh, because Zysis owns a ship. Because right? Zysis yeah. owns a okay. ship. I, sure. sure. I, I could see it being plausible. I'm not sure I want mm-hmm. her again. Okay. I mean, she yeah. was cool yeah. while we had her. I just don't know if, like, like her story was There would be anything new. I don't, know sure. if, I don't know if we need her, really. Yeah. Like, I we've had her being a jerk on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I want to talk about Ghost Naz. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah. like... like this this chapter I was reading and I'm just like, wait, Naz is here. Oh wait, he's dead. He's 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 clearly a shade, right? Like that that is what's happening. He's a shade yeah. and he's a sapient <laughs> shade, which we've never uh-huh. seen before. Like fully sapient. He's just he's like a guy. But he's, he's not just a like a wisp. He's like yeah. fully dressed. His eyes yeah. aren't doing anything weird. We don't know if like we don't know whether or not he operates by the standard shade rules. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's true. Like, does he become a shade even if he hasn't been on Threnody in a long time? Did he die on Threnody? Like, what in the world is going on there? Like, Sunlit Main said something was just wacky about Threnodite souls in general, right? Yeah, so I like, think he doesn't need to that? be on Threnody for that to maybe happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, true, but it would be even more interesting if it were on Threnody. Yeah, so yeah. Brandon said he's loaning Naz from Isaac. Because uh, Naz is Isaac's character, um, mm-hmm. and they they have clearly planned out what's happening with Naz. Uh, and so the question <laughs> is, well, how did he die? Like, what's going on with that? He's like at, at a dinner party. Uh, <laughs> like, I think it's possible in that Isaac story, like boatload of mummies slash book yes. of nails, that he yeah, dies there, too. right? Because like he's he's almost in I like think... an era two outfit type I, thing. I, mm-hmm. I I hope it's there. I really hope it's not just like that. He dies off screen because I'll yeah. be like immensely disappointed if he right. just got killed off screen and that's just it. <laughs> There's gonna be some Isaac story. Like, it might not be that one mm-hmm. though. Potentially. It yeah. might not be bald load of mummies or well, book as, of long as, we as long as we see it. Gotta see it. Gotta see it. And it's like something and not just like something dumb or just like him dying off screen. Cause I'm like, Naz matters. You can't do that. Yeah. Well, especially because like Naz talks about previously, like in order to become a shade, there are mm-hmm. certain rites and ceremonies yes. and yep. stuff that has to occur. Yes. Yep. And yes. like that seems like a Chekhov's gun to me. Yeah. And we because specifically Naz said this there are things that need to happen in order for this to occur. Mm-hmm. When Naz dies, I want to see those things happen. Yes. Yeah. Like why is he different? And and yeah, I guess those special rights are why he's a sapient shade, I guess. And just like I guess. Does that, that mean would explain... like there's other sapient shades? Yeah, that's just my question. Like how common how is did he know that? are they? <laughs> Where are they? Shades are the weirdest cognitive shadow. They? Just the weirdest ones. That would explain, though, why everyone in Sunlit Man turns into shades, because that's just like a threnodite thing. Yeah. But becoming a sapient shade 
requires those rites and ceremonies sure. and whatever the heck yeah. the Naz talks about. Because that, that was a weird thing for me, like reading Sunlit Man. Like I thought there had to be things that happen in order to turn into a shade. Well, I, I mean, it was it's the other way around. It, I mean, it yeah. was always weird that, that line in Secret History that Naz said, because we see shades cool. get created on Threnody and like nothing happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. so like, what are you talking about Naz? Like, it's never made any sense to me what he's talking about. Yeah. Just want to say, I, I was probably the, had the most boring idea out of all of you about Nas, because my hey. assumption when I saw him dead was just like, I guess like the old age caught up to him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, time dilation only lasts for so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, I, especially like since he's the one who's going into all these planets, then like he can't like time dilate as much as other characters. Because he has to like be in the present for <laughs> extended periods of time. Mm. That's curious. I wonder if that actually is why they killed him off, so that they could have him be a character <laughs> be a in these books instead of just dead. <laughs> <laughs> because as far as we know, he wasn't immortal. I mean, they could just get a bunch of breath. How hard would that be for Naz to do? I don't know. That's fair. <laughs> like that—that that doesn't seem unreasonable. But like, it, I mean. Yeah. Brandon and Isaac just thought this was a cooler idea. I mean, it, like, is, it is definitely cooler for sure. Though. It is objectively cooler. I mean, if Chris has to time dilate to live forever, then I guess getting all these breaths for immortality can't be that easy. I mean, all the immortals in the Cosmere, like, I mean, okay, sure, whatever. Like, I'm sure they're doing something. I, I would oh, yeah. like that explored a little more because they're just like, yeah, there's just people. They're just chilling. I'm like, but how, though? Really? Like that. Some yeah. more detail would be useful. I do think he died some horrible death, though, and I do want to see it on screen because that's the coolest <laughs> option. Because um, I feel like Naz, who's hilarious, by the way, like just yeah, 10 out of 10. I love the banter. So good. Again, very Firefly vibes it, yeah. with a ghost. Like, yes. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. It, it, like, it feels different. It feels like he's trying to... To, like, his banter with Starling is different than his banter with Chris. It feels like he's a lot more yes. open, nice. a lot more like he like he he will banter and be kind of a little bit sarcastic with both of them. But like with Chris, it kind of seems like Naz, Chris, and uh, what's uh, Nikki? It kind of seems like he's yeah. generally like a bit grumpy and not really like yeah. like okay, I'll do this stuff. I'm not it's like surly. really mad, but yeah, I guess. But then with dying. Starling, he just seems like chill and happy i guess Sorry, what dying did just did wonders for his mood <laughs> yeah oh i was i just said it, because starling is the best and how could anyone not like starling like of course even <laughs> like she has a bit of like adolin vibes that's like yeah she does you, you, like I in that way that. ghost naz is crazy like that's just yeah i hope we find out more about like I don't think we will, but I hope we know a at least a tiny bit more about the situation. Yeah. I, I, I like would not be surprised if it's the Isaac story that he's writing. That would make sense. Yeah. Also, sideburns are bad. Hair in front of the ears is bad. I, Naz, you're wrong about everything ever and <laughs> incorrect. Sideburns, bad. To be fair, I think it could be the, a centuries long rationalization process for Naz. That is just like, yeah, I mean, look, I, I've i been grumpy for it Stuck for like them. 500 years and, I'm, you know, I've come to terms with it now. I'm good with yeah. it. <laughs> you know, um, there's not much you can do about it. Anyway. Not, not much. Not much. Hard, hard to shave when the razor just goes right through. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I need you need that anti-investiture shaver. <laughs> <laughs> a silver razor. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, yeah. That's but just keep swarming back. Feel that right. Yeah. yeah. It's probably pro probably would hurt him to use silver. That that <laughs> that's probably bad. Uh, maybe yeah. not the best for him. Do you have to talk about Starling and like her past? Yeah, she's a Hoyt apprentice and on. stuff. Yeah, like that's cool. There's so much. <laughs> yeah, let, let's. Yeah, <laughs> new Hoyt apprentice just dropped. Official like... <laughs> Hoyt apprentice TM, and it's she's the non-human one that Brandon has mentioned before. Yeah. She would have been the one in the kite the story, kite story yeah. and now yeah. may or may not. Yeah, something happened to Starling. 
where she's been exiled and has not been allowed to transform into a dragon for 12 years and wears metal bracers that maybe are dragon steel i don't know maybe probably i have to assume it's probably. dragon steel or like some god of metal at yeah, the very yeah, least something. i figure it was silver since it's supposed to be oh kind maybe of, like, magic inhibitor isn't silver like the magic killer and then aluminum is the magic inhibitor oh maybe maybe yeah. she was aluminum. Whatever. one of them yeah i know i'm being like the negative one on whenever i'm on the shortcast <laughs> <laughs> no. I awesome. I feel like the need to say it. I'm kind of disappointed that Brandon came up with excuse to not have his first like dragon protagonist be able to transform into her dragon form in the book that gives us dragon lore. Because like if you if I want to read a, a book point. about a dragon, it's cool that we have shape-shifting dragons, but like the human form is not like the appeal of a dragon, right? It, it does feel Chekhov's gun e again. Yes. Yeah, but I, I can tell you, like, I can imagine already how it's going to happen. She's going to, the same thing as happened with Hoyd in Tress, and the same thing that happened with Sigzil in The Sunlit Man. Mm -hmm. She's going to regain her powers in the last few pages of the book and use that to save the day. And that's going to be the only time we're going to see her transformed into a dragon. Because yeah, this is I'll just point. how. Yeah, that How makes those sense. Chekhov's guns go in Brandon's yeah. books? Yeah. I mean, that's in Brandon's books and like everything. Yeah, I like those things. I mean, yeah, that that's a fairly standard fantasy. Structure. Yeah, but like Brandon is now doing this like for the third book. Well, not in a row, but like for the third. This is the third secret yeah. project Brandon is doing this in. I'll mm. just say, as a uh, trademarked starling apologist. Um, and I, I'll, 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 ta I'll take that title that from a writerly perspective, I do think it makes sense to have her a lot of the time in human form. And I think it m provides a very interesting internal conflict for her as to what's going on. It does. I'm uh, sure we could have done this without taking away her ability to shape ship at all. Like, I'm sure she's a lovely character. I'm sure she's a lovely woman, but I want to see her just... Turn into a dragon. Yeah, but frequently. well, that, that's 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 totally fair. I I get that. I'm just saying this conflict is a very interesting dragon conflict uh, for her because like it's such a core. Like the prologue's setting up, she's always been so excited to be in dragon form, right? And obviously, it's such an important part about being a dragon. And so that was taken away from her for some reason. And so like it has this very good mystery aspect. And like a mm -hmm. part of her is taken from her that I find very compelling. Like, I think she would be a much less interesting character uh, without that. I, I definitely hear what you're saying, but I think the character work wise, I, I love it. Uh, and yeah. that's like, like character work wise. I love it. Plot wise. It is very predictable, but the character work, like, I have I faith in Brandon don't... that he's going to execute that dilemma. I well. don't know about like. I don't know if I agree with you on like character work because like sure something happened some dark dark event in her past that caused this but I feel like the if she had to like be the one to choose to not transform into a dragon for some reasons rather than having this thrust upon her I feel like that would be more interested in the in the sense of like this is a huge part of what she is but yet she chooses not to do this for reasons this and that rather than this is something that was taken from her but you know this it does come down to personal preference at this point i feel like yeah like i think i just don't see that she would ever like choose that you know <laughs> like that doesn't really well, make i mean yeah, i don't know there brandon can write in whatever reason there can be reasons for yeah her to totally do totally that. totally yeah. she can make anything possible i guess i'm just a little bit I, I, it it comes down to just me being salty that we get a dragon that can't be a dragon. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, that's, that's that's like you know, she she's not going to transform until like the last chapter or two. Probably not. Like, I'm going to be very positively surprised if she gets her dragon powers back before like the three quarters mark. But my hopes are low. I I, I think there's definitely some practical aspect of. 
you can't have your scrappy space opera story if one of the power uh, people i mean uh, you know obviously the reason Brandon <laughs> did this is because dragons are too op and she, he had to nerf her so that his plot would work yes i yes. mean that's obvious yeah and, and, but but i i will say starling is just such a profoundly like optimistic person that like i need that contrast with her to i think make her int- as an interesting she protagonist. could be profoundly well, optimistic dragon but she's not <laughs> right i, I will say in it's spaceships from from the reading it definitely read that like like she was she was throwing up some optimism but like that wasn't it was it read very much like a front to me like okay. she's pretending that she's being optimist or like not even pretending she might believe that she's being optimistic like she's trying she's trying but she's very obviously like still unhappy about this situation mm-hmm. well with her situation yeah for sure yeah yeah I don't know. I, I like the contrast because we, we don't need another Rayadin, okay? Is, is all I'm saying. Like, he's like, ah, I, you know, I believe the best in people and I'm just, I'm Rayadin, you know? Uh, like, I like, I, like have, I like having that contrast. It's a very good character conflict for me. Uh, I really like it. I, I can see why someone's like, okay, yeah, that's a pretty predictable like thing, but you know, maybe the story is just going to be a tropey story. We're going to have a tropey space opera thing and... You know, I'm kind of cool with it because Cosmere's awesome. I'm, we already have like Brandon tropes. Character whose powers are sealed. Evil Skybreaker. <laughs> random, just pa- magical reference to schedule and <laughs> yeah. Aethers somehow being relevant. <laughs> oh, I mean, that, that's that's just, we're, we're just in Space Age Cosmere where we're just, we're, we just get to reference other things. There, right? Like that's, that's where we are. Everything else. Yeah. Waiting for the accidental homoerotic tension between the Zoot Z and Naz. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good random trope right there. Uh, let's get Kadash in here, do some wrestling uh, with the shade. Um, classic scene. No, that's going to be six of the Dusk and Nas. They're, they're going to be having the homoerotic Ooh. tension. Yeah, it's yes. going to be six of them. Dusk is like, yeah, I like that suit. I'm into the suit inside Burns, actually. He does already see dead people, so... Ooh. He does. Ooh. Easy. Okay, but like, what if what <laughs> if Sack lets him see Nas as just like... Oh, uh, would it be cool? Ooh. Actually, do we do we know can other crew members see Naz? Or I think is it just so. Link? So yeah, I think they can, they can see him because like he stayed outside of the room when she went in to meet the engineer because he was like, I don't want to like scare anyone because they yeah. because he does yeah. scare people and they see him apparently. And I'm pretty okay, sure he was like, like interacting six, with Zipsy. <laughs> six of the dusk isn't going to be scared of Naz because he already no. sees dead people. There, you can have this ship already. Set ship it or rip it. <laughs> Not the dynamic. It's a different ship though. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> hey, hey. It is a pretty good dynamic, though. It is, it is a pretty good yeah, dynamic. It's like the kind of like two like set of characters that's like very like ship it or rip it. Like you immediately know where to go True. if you're on True. the ship team. <laughs> I, I'm glad that, that we're gonna get you know more dusk character rather than in Six of the Dusk original, which was yeah, he was right. present. Um, <laughs> he, he was certainly a character in a story. <laughs> a character, <laughs> yeah. literally. Like, it's so hard for me to remember six of the dust details. Oh, also, I, I will say with the flashbacks, I don't even think you should reread six of the dust. You'll just read it in the book. So, like, it, like don't don't even bother <laughs> reading it again. Like, just just read it. Like, if you don't remember it, see what order Brandon puts it in, and see what you think. Might as well. <laughs> Let's talk about our Aetherbound. Well, not Aetherbound. Yes. Trained Aetherbound, but, but without a functioning Aether. We have... Which Brandon loves to play with this idea of, like, people having powers, but them not working properly. Yeah, like with um, Starling? We saw it in Rhythm of War. <laughs> like, literally like Starling, Starling. Yeah. We saw it in Rhythm of War. We yeah. saw it in White Sand. We saw it in the original Aether of Night, which is what my first thought yeah. was. I was like, this is very similar yeah. to like uh, Ray's situation of like he has he technically has an aether, but it's not working yeah. as well as everyone else's. I was like, huh, this sounds familiar. Brandon likes this trope. Yeah. But Aditil, <laughs> I do. I think, yeah, Aditil, yeah, something like that. 
I think I am Adil? on this point. A detail? Yeah, sure. he, he, he was pronouncing it a detail. Sure, great. I mean, he says Vivina, point... so I mean, just keep that in mind. <laughs> like, at this point, I'm really wondering, like, how many books will we get where Aethers are like major plot elements before we get the actual Aether? Aether That's a great Aether, question. Yeah. Good like, question. <sighs> clearly, they're I'm important. Wondering. Like the Zephyr, especially. Almost wondering if Randon's like, I don't know if I'll have time during Aether of Night, so I'm just gonna like slowly scatter it into all these other books. God, but like yeah, he, maybe. he keeps putting he like would. cool story I hooks know. for whatever's happening on Daughtry, the Aether planet. Yes, like, he does. He does. Like in Lost Metal, he said like there was mm. the Dark Aether the dark that Aether. took uh-huh. over, and whatever this that means, it has. Well, there was Daughtry, a perpendicularity. Yeah, used to have a perpendicularity, which means. It had one, and I was chatting with my wife about this, and like I think it's fairly recent that they did have a perpendicularity. Like yeah, it, it, it could, it like could it, be like mm, a few centuries it, ago, that, potentially, yeah. but like it, it could be like easily within Starling's lifetime, right? Like a decade or two, even. Like what's going on with that? And and actually, a perpendicularity for the Aether planet is super interesting because. Aethers are like this whole other dimension compared with the shards. Because the shards, because yeah. you know, we need more magic in the Cosmere. So sure, great, mm-hmm. great, that's fine. Could Aethers like ha- invest in a place and make a perpendicularity? Was a shard there? Like, what is? There's a lot of like, questions there. I mean, how does investiture even work on Daughtry? You it's know, great question. Because it's so different. It's great question. Aethers. I am I am willing to bet that like the Aether of Night is about how that per- well maybe not simply yeah. about but will explain why that perpendicularity has vanished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah Aether of Night has to be about the Dark Gate and whatever is happening. But yeah, I mean, with it's a title like that, it's got it's in the name. Right? <laughs> tons of questions there. So like I, yeah. it does feel like Brandon. You know, he keeps setting up more books. So I mean, th- this th- that's why him writing secret projects for fun like yeah cool now you get uh night brigade oh now you get aether of night like okay cool or something great you keep as long as he actually gets to writing night brigade and aether <laughs> of night because i need those books i know yeah that that is that is the problem look that i would say the thing with this announcement is we can always we can never believe that Brandon mm-hmm. is not writing three other things that may yeah. just randomly mm-hmm. come out. It could literally happen anytime. I'm not worried about the yeah. Cosmere drought. 2025, no, we're set. Anymore. We're going to have plenty to talk about, I think, <laughs> for the show. I was never worried about it. I was looking forward to a break. Well, you have to wait to 2026 for that. <laughs> I don't Watch even know if we'll get a break. So. Yeah. No. Watch him just release A for of Night in 2026. <laughs> yeah. That's a Sanderson curiosity. <laughs> Curiosity, maybe, yeah. Um, no, no, the the, the actual. No, no, no. Oh, the, the actual one. Aether of my yeah. not Aether of my Prime, the one we do, we distribute. Yeah, I mean, he's are, been are working you, on Aethers enough. So. Yeah, are, mm-hmm. are you are you guys not excited for the killer twenty twenty five release of White Sand Pro? <laughs> 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 yes, White Sand Fifth Ultimate Edition. Yes, Final <laughs> Version three point oh point five. That's that's the title. <laughs> that's the, that's the Coppermind <laughs> article name. <laughs> White Sand final, final, final version. Yes. <laughs> final <laughs> draft. Aditil. Uh, Aditil. Sorry. Words. Uh, Daughtry, I have no issue with, but yeah. Yeah. Seven siblings, a big family. Uh, like, I love the Indian inspired um, vibes. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like that. I think it's really good to get uh, a culture like that in the Cosmere. She can help wake up the spores that's that's how she said it right mm-hmm. i'm extremely confused about that whole like line and how that was relevant at all i mean i guess she's doing stuff with the aethers that they have right i guess yeah you, you know you wake them up interests, if there was like something a... to do with them sleeping then we would know we'd have learned about that but the aether spores in tress are weird like that that's one of the strangest things about putting tress out first and that's like our first exposure to how aethers work because aethers well, we, we had the lost don't metal. work that way yeah we yeah. had the lost metal yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but like the thing is that like i think 
I think the spores, when they are talking about spores here, I think they are talking about Lumar spores. I don't think there are different Probably. aether spores. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I think there are aethers and then there are aether spores. Yeah. That is probably like the easiest way to like move aethers around, yeah. just getting mm -hmm. the Lumar spores rather than. Unless there's another strain of aethers, because like there, oh. there aren't just have to be two. There like there could be, be similar planets right. that also have spores that okay. like manifest differently, potentially. I don't know. You know, I just fur, but just don't do like two different things that are spores. At least do like different kinds of it. Don't do two spores. That's I dumb. Know. I don't yeah. know. You, you can argue no, though, in, in terms of like in Tress, when Tress is experimenting with the midnight aether, that one does have a sort of personality to it. Yeah. That one so it, does. But it it's would like stand a reason one. that like it, it, it I, might not be the only one though. I like, kind maybe of like as, as if you get further away from Lumar and the spores just sit and hang around and don't do anything and don't interact with more spores of their same type, they get bored and fall asleep. And are therefore less yeah. effective. I, like, I don't know. Maybe there could maybe. be a lot of reasons for that. You know, I kind of that. wonder if maybe waking up the spores has something to do with like maybe activating them without water. Because like the Lumars, oh, they oh, have yeah, water sure. work. Yeah. And like, if this ship is supposed to be constantly like moving under the thrust of, because like this isn't because they travel through Shadesmar, which yep. has air. Yep. Which, by extension, right. means that they have air resistance. Yes. Which means they can't do the, sh sure. the thing that actual like s spaceships do, which is just accelerate and then cut the engines. Yes. They mm -hmm. have to have like constant thrust to move. Yes. Which means that if they are losing using Lumar spores to like propel the ship, they would either need some way to activate them without water, or this ship needs like eighty percent water. water tanks by by yeah. volume. Yeah, and that that doesn't yeah. seem. It doesn't Efficient. seem like it. Yeah. And, and also, like, we don't know what a traditional Aetherbound interacting with the spores right. works. Like, I yeah. can see, like, there I being like lots Zephyr, of weird reactions. Because we've only, we've only seen the Zephyr, um, like, in Tress. We haven't yeah. seen it, like, we've seen, ro like, with Rosite. I was about to say Amberite. Uh, <laughs> like, we've seen Rosite in uh, The Lost Metal, yeah. you know. Like, even if she had a functioning aether, we don't have no idea how that would look, yeah, and how uh like yeah. Zephyr spores interact because like Verdant and Rosite are pretty clear from what they do, and also I mean we've seen the OG versions of those, so we can imagine how it is, yeah. But there's something I'm like, how in the world does an aether bound interact, um, with its Zephyr, yeah, the red spikes. Like there's a Zephyr Aether Bound is like Iron Man just blasting wind from their hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the wind blaster. That's, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the flying people of that. Yeah, those are the main characters. Obviously, every magic system. Obviously, I do wonder like what it kind of Aether Bounds uh, a deal. Yeah, what kind of Aether Bound mm -hmm. she was like? She's got like blue glass, and I don't know if that really. Like corresponds to anything. Wasn't the blue I think, I think like Zephyr? Is Zephyr? Isn't that yeah. Zephyr? Yeah. The color, yeah, but like glass. Zephyr's air. Yeah, glass but like, maybe might be about like the corruption of like wh I mean whatever is going wrong with her. Um, or Aether maybe. That, that could I just be feel, the manifestation of the like, bond. Yeah. Yeah, like it just because you can't manifest it as air. <laughs> Like, just like a hole hole in our hand. <laughs> yeah, but why would it? Listen, if soul casters can do it, yeah. But I'm fair. just like, like, what does glass have to do with that? Then, like, like yeah, even sure. even if you, even if you can't do air, like, what? Why glass? Looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it might literally be just a rule of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I, I I've always been a little confused about Zephyr pro providing thrust because like an air canister is not going to work super great. Long. Like like yeah, I mean, I guess if if you can't, as long as you don't actually need crap loads of water, sure, right? Like the the spores are are very light, so I guess that works. But need you need some way to do that. 
there's lots of Magitek going on, right? Like, mm-hmm. what, so what, yeah. what else do we have? We have Rosharan anti-grav technology and the Skadrian composite metal hull. So, and it does say that all the tech strange had produced viable starships without the others. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I will say, I, I understand how like Rosharan Antigrav and Datrian Aphers Frost have produced spaceship, but I'm not sure what is Skadrian Metal Hulk. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I guess Owlman, uh, but... Well, I'm, I'm assuming theory. like yeah. the Skadrian, like this is just another Skadrian... Like, like it's not the hole that is producing the actual, like, getting them into the air. It's other yeah, 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 yeah. technology. It just feels it feels a little funny next to each other because, like, Fair. It's, it feels like it's a metal thing. Therefore, it must be Skadrian. Well, I feel like the because it is specifically like composite metal. It's probably different alloys. Specifically, you've got like brass that they've somehow made into a ferrochemical thing that is providing heat you, shields. Yeah. From, like, oh, interesting. Like, okay, sure. Like something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mechanical yeah, cool. access, okay. but yeah, okay. Yeah, something like that is what I would yeah, assume. That's, that's, that's actually that's really cool. Actually, yeah. That's yeah. definitely more interesting than what I was thinking. Yeah, because yeah, I was, yeah, it, I was thinking what like you were metal, thinking of, but... just like, it's metal, Skadrian's good metal. Like, okay, cool, <laughs> like, neat. But Yeah, my yeah. first thought was was brass heat shields. Yeah, because you, you definitely would need that. Yeah, um, and then you Especially because like... they're going to be traveling through atmosphere in Shadesmar. Yeah. They mm-hmm. need something to dissipate heat, and yeah. brass ferrochemy would do that. Yeah. Actually, speaking of, like, traveling through Shadesmar... I wonder, like, how, because, like, perpendicularities, they aren't, I don't remember, how large are they? I mean, not that big. Not I that think big. they can vary, probably, yeah. but, like, not huge. Mm. I'm, like, I'm, I guess I'm just wondering, like, is is the dynamic, like, actually, not, not space warfare, but, like, the the logistics of like transport is it like the dynamic only ever travels through Shadesmar and never emerges into the physical realm, or is I mean, it they, that it can go through perpendicularities? They said that it was like capable of going through space. They spe- specifically called it out. Okay, but like it's it is space warfy, but does it ever leave Shadesmar? I would guess so. Uh, I, like, I think it, it could. <laughs> Especially Our- given like what we see in Stormlight with Oath Gates, it wouldn't be difficult to bring a ship into Shadesmar that way. Okay, uh, sure. Using strictly perpendicularities, they probably have like port cities around the perpendicularity where starships park or Shadesmar ships park and then offload and then go through the perpendicularity. But if something mm-hmm. like an Oath Gate is still viable, bringing yeah, okay. mass amounts of things yeah, it, to it from Shadesmar wouldn't be difficult. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, like, I'm thinking like they, they can't, they clearly like not everyone can construct artificial like access point into Shadesmar or yeah. else like Aditil wouldn't have the problems yeah. with getting back to that tree. Right. Yeah, no no mention of like else calling at all in this, which is, you know, which kind, is kind of so, interesting. Yeah. It could be just like, it could be like Roshar exclusive tech. Maybe that's what's Another Maybe. like tech advantage they have over skate is that I mean, they that'd can be just a huge make... tech advantage. Yeah, to oh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I could totally believe yeah. that. Honestly, else calling is so much cooler than we've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, it would be great to see that on screen uh, for sure. Yeah, it just uh, and Brenda just, just uh, in general. Programs. Yeah, in general, I'm just fascinated with like the glimpses we get at like what interstellar mm-hmm. travel looks like because yes. like we have those. We not not only do we have like at least three different systems for how spaceships work and like whatever like hybrid ships like the dynamic mm-hmm. we also have like just two systems of traveling between the stars because like the shades more travel and ftl travel coexist yep right yeah it's it's interesting because it feels like this this is saying that there's some kind of uh way to get the ships through i guess mm-hmm. Which, which is weird for sure. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. yeah you can't about really the well of ascension in yeah. terms of size. Yeah, it's like, not well, ship size. Well, it, like that's definitely not ship size. Like, like yeah, and is can it, you imagine like 
smaller than like a pool would be. Yeah, You're around that size. Yeah. That's that's also but like again, in the well of ascension, like in a cave. cave. Mm. Yeah, it's in a cave. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm but mm-hmm. in in terms of like first of the sun. Yeah. Uh, the the shard pool. It's uh, a on huge first lake. The sun is big. Is it? Um. I mean, it's it, a lake. It's fairly so. It, it's more than just the Well of Ascension. Yeah. So, you know, so of size of perpendicularity cities. might be variable. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Like speaking of those port cities, I think what's most reasonable is probably that they have like city like on both sides, like on the mm-hmm. yeah, like, physical realm yeah. side and on the Shades of Mars side, and that those that are too small to like carry like a full ship. Like the dynamic, depending on like, I guess there are different sizes of ships too, probably. Yeah. So they'll have a place to like dock on the Shades Mars side, even if they can't like pass through the perpendicularity, and it'll be like transferred to like smaller ships that can pass. If you need to like take things to the physical realm, I feel like it'll be like very dependent on like what perpendicularity we're talking about. Yeah. Though I will say like the mental image of like the dynamic emerging from the lake on from like the perpendicularity lake on first of the sun is a very cool so mental image. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Also an interesting tech line was uh Starling thinking this. Really all it was missing was an awakened metal mind, but those were expensive and Starling had never trusted them anyway. That gives me ship's AI type vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. We've seen that twice. Yeah, yeah, because there was the awakened steel mind in Sunlit Man, uh-huh. right? But I don't where's, think it where's talked. Where's the other time? Well, I, I, this I, I, in, I would argue in Tress. In Tress. Like, did we see an yeah. awakened steel mind or awakened metal it, mind? It doesn't say it's an awakened metal mind, but it does say it's an awakened... Like it, it's the awakened ship's AI thing. Like it, it specifically says it's awake. Oh, I remember. Oh, the computer. Okay, I remember what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. The source versus computer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I man, some of these newer books, I'm definitely hazier on the details than mm-hmm. some of these older <laughs> ones. Yeah, I guess maybe like it could be like a ship's AI, but not a sapient one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, mm. I could I could very much see at least top of the line stuff is it's literally like an awakened thing and it is uh a computer that is an AI that's yeah. these mm-hmm. these awakened things. Uh I, I'm still wondering why that one in Sunlit Man is awakened steel mind in particular. I don't know how that works. Don't I, I don't really understand FTL? I mean I, I guess it's interesting also galactic war wise are is like nalthus on team skadriel like that or is nalthus like an independent thing like selling its tech to whoever like i guess i guess sell could have it pretty easily like but you know elantrians (laughs) are special so the sorceress can easily acquire such things it would be funny if like nalthus is Maybe like both Cell and Nalfis are neutral, but Cell is neutral in the sense of don't come here, and Nalfis is neutral in the sense of we'll sell our stuff to whoever everyone who pays. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and it makes sense. Uh, like I, I, I can see that, and I can imagine them getting very rich, very, very, yeah. very Actually, rich. Like we, we know that like Nalfis is one of the earlier Cosmere plants to have like regulated Cosmere trade because like Brandon has talked mm-hmm. about that customs uh, yeah. what was that custom in uh, Nalfian customs, Nalfian customs a, long, yeah. a long time ago so they may well you know instead of going for the military victory they went for a merchant strategy to get a, along in the Cosmere yeah I, I am so like curious to see like what the geopolitics of space age Cosmere look like yes yeah because Beyond it's already fascinating trade. enough, like on yeah. a planet like perspective, you know, we're getting the setup of like Cold War between like North and South on Skadriel. Um, I mean, Roshar and all its conflicts that we've been following. Because there's like, there's so many oh, even more planets. Scale to a planet level. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can't generalize planets completely. No, absolutely not. Yeah. They're different um, countries. Yeah. 
There's actually the Skybreaker country, and they're actually. <laughs> 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 um, um, they're all. It's, it's going to be really interesting because I, I definitely think that we are underestimating the number of factions that they're going to be. Um, yeah. by just saying Escape oh, Real and Roshar and Cell, like there's definitely going to be a lot of like sub factions like within the planets, and maybe the planet like those sub factions within the planets are more similar to each other than they are to anything else. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're they're the same group. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of the things I'm most I mean, excited about with Space Age Cosmere. I think I think Brandon's only doing that because we haven't really seen any of those those factions yet. So like we yeah. don't know. But I I am excited for hopefully more in that direction. Mm-hmm. It, it, it mm-hmm. definitely seems like Sunlit Man's like yeah. There's just like tons of Skadrian political things. It's like oh man, this Skadrial stuff's gonna be complicated and like how the North and the South all mm-hmm. turn out and stuff. Mm-hmm. We haven't say. heard much about the North, like in future th- set things. Yeah, it's usually been like mm-hmm. Malwish things. Yeah, it would be very funny if like the first first half of all of Mistborn is all about like saving the North, and then the Space Age Cosmere is like North is no longer relevant. <laughs> and yeah, it just <laughs> Malwish all the way down. Northern Scadrial gets nuked in Mistborn Era 3. It just... <laughs> the cold war was decidedly though. less cold. And, uh... They have fancy bombs now. <laughs> they can do that. Yeah, the Sp- Space Age Cosmere is going to be super cool. It-, it really is going to be awesome to have like two superpowers. May- maybe Aether is like way up there, but like I don't think these other planets are going to be total pushovers either. Uh, at yeah. least like the ones we've seen so far. Like obviously first of the sun I, is at a very clear disadvantage magic tech wise, mm-hmm. but like now is probably doing fine. Right. Uh, and mm-hmm. like, they just can't do anything with impunity. Just like our, our cold war era, like U uh, S and uh, mm-hmm. Soviet union. There's still a lot of other countries that like definitely have opinions mm-hmm. on things and, like they might be allied with one greater faction, but like things can change and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be cool. Mm-hmm. Or they get affected even if they don't want to like get into it. Yeah. They said their intent was to go to Silverlight. So that's cool. I hope we get to see Silverlight. That like, would be so cool. Please, can we get to see Silverlight? I, I have a prediction. Yes. Because if we only get Starling, like start of her plotline in chapter 11, what if the first 10 chapters are about Dusk getting to Silverlight and Silverlight mm. is where Dusk's plotline and Starlink plotlines meet? Yeah. Well, Would make sense. Well, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. I accept. Silverlight novel was like the third thing and so it would be cool for everyone to be correct about what the <laughs> fuck is. You just gotta get Utah in there and then there's everything. Yeah, if they get Utah in right. there, then yeah, yeah then we got all yeah, of them. Yeah, they travel to Utah for whatever they need to do. Yeah. We gotta talk about Zitzi, our yeah. lawnark, our feathered guy. Uh, a feathered human, not, not a bird not from birds a human i don't know a, a species of humans who that. evolve feathers not sure what sort of evolutionary pressures led yeah, to that I in particular no, I, don't, I don't know how that works i have to assume it i have to assume it's just real cold where where he's from and it's just like feathers I mean, insulate better or, do they? yeah I mean, I mean, but like, there's lots of there. mammals who don't know. develop it's, feathers. It's, like, that's not a right. thing that happens to mammals. Brandon's just a really big fan of uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker <laughs> and wanted to get those guys <laughs> into the Cosmere. It, I don't know. It's, it's so super weird. wacky. I, I don't. That was another thing. I mean, like, okay, oh, we, we're just having yeah, a totally, I mean, okay, sure. <laughs> I need art of this because I don't know how to imagine it, except like the Egyptian gods that have like feather heads. It's I, like I just think Falco from Star Fox, mind. you know, it's just Falco. I think it's just like a crest on the top and then maybe like teeny little patterns down the arms. I, but like yeah. not like hair that is like feathers, but just like 
some feathers up there instead of hair. I don't know. I I don't I, mean, I don't <laughs> know. It was definitely All I a can choice. Think of is like Bestarin from like Aether of Yes, <laughs> it, it is giving Bestarin actually. Yes. Brandon, Brandon decided that he is not going to give us Aether cat. Not games. a cat person. This is the best. This is the next best thing. Jess was saying we demand cat people in the Cosmere. Like if if you have if you have bird people, bird people, we where are our people. cat boys in the Cosmere? Come on, Aiden Elsium, get on that. Um, maybe that's one of the species on Dotri, though. You know, it's possible. I, I can't wait to read the Aether of Night, where the main character is a Zephyr wielding flying cat boy. I mean, y y I'm sold, honestly. It sounds amazing. <laughs> like, sounds like a main character for Brandon. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, the Sleepless did something to Zizi's homeworld. Um, and Zizi really does not like the sleepless. So that's interesting. Because yeah. the ship's doctor is a sleepless. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's... I was legit expecting it to be like Ulam. Yeah. Like, yeah they kept talking definitely. about the doctor. The doctor, I was like... It's, it's sleepless, like is, sleepless is cool too, <laughs> no. Sleepless is very Yeah, cool. sleepless is really cool. So I'm very oh. interested... Just everything about Lawnarks, like wh what? What's going on with this? Yeah, here? I right. I'm kind of just like squinting at Lawnarks in general. Um, there's another one of those things. Like, whereas I'm positively holding out for more Starling and like liking what we've got, I'm like squinting at the Lawnarks and holding <laughs> out for more. I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> Brandon. Is Brandon. <laughs> okay, sure. It's it's Brandon just. These secret projects have really shown he just like, I'm just going to do a wacky thing and you're just going to deal with it. And it's yeah. like, OK, we're it got bird people now. Like, all right, sleepless. She's going to find stuff. something to explain it away. Sure. Sure. Because magic. Because, because investiture. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Because a wizard did it. Yeah. OK, so we know from a stream that Larnarks are from a planet that we have heard of but never been to. <laughs> yes. So really? anyone wants to place any bets on which planet this yes, is? That is true. Um, that is what he said. Okay, so which are our options? We have Vax. Okay. Vax, Vax Oberdai, Bajendal, Mythos. Oh yeah, because Bajendal's not the, the Aether homeworld anymore because it's right. not tree. Oh right, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Grand yeah, Apparatus. Right. Whatever that is. Where, where did we learn about Bajendal? Uh, I think Codename says it's it Lost in Lost Metal. metal. Yeah, yeah, it's Lost Metal. Yeah. In Lost metal. Yep. E J E J A L. E and D A L. Bajendal. Okay. Yeah. I, I found, I wrote Bajendal and uh, somehow Google managed to direct me to Coppermind article on Bajendal. <laughs> Look, you know, yeah. it knows what you want. Yeah. Actually, like looking at the Coppermind page, it says that the, the, the top quote is like, travel to Jendal has been completely upset. Oh. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah. Maybe. Solid. Solid guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so don't, don't would be funny. funny. Considering it's like bird people and myths. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, like that, like it has, it's, it's just about like the names, not about any other thing that could make sense. I, 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 saw, I saw someone be like, it's going to be an Icarus retelling. Oh, would it be far. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he goes full Thanks Greek mythology. Myths. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you flew That's too high up fun. to the sleepless, and then they invaded your planet. <laughs> <laughs> the sun okay, is actually just... all bugs. <laughs> okay, but like now you put a mental image in my head of like a sky that is covered entirely with flying sleepless, and I'm not sure if I love it or I hate it. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would be a story where Brandon needs to put a content yes. warning because it's like, yeah, I don't know if you might want to read that one. Like, yeah, not that he um, does that, but, you know, he should yeah. do that. Interesting that about Mythos, uh, Kelsey mentions that Mythos could be a possible source of allies to Harmony. Yeah, you gotta get those know. bird people on on your side. I mean, they seem nice. <laughs> they seem nice. You know, I don't know. Their planet got wrecked by the sleepless. They're so helpful. Look, Kelsier's whole thing is like, oh, your planet was destroyed. Twin soul come 
come join me. We'll we'll deal with that later, eventually, once you do stuff for me. And so I was like, oh, the sleepless destroyed the planet. Okay, you join me. Don't maybe don't go outside though, because like the Scandrians are gonna flip with a like bird human here. Okay. <laughs> like maybe maybe stay stay down here, you know. Shave. <laughs> you're 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 on our Shadesmar side. You're you're on Team Shadesmar for the ghost bloods, <laughs> right? Like run some caravans or something. D- different branch. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the end of my list of things. Like that's yeah. th- there's there's a lot here. We have not met the whole crew because we don't know anything about Leonore. Uh we don't know the or about captain. whoever the captain is. You know the yeah. captain's grumpy, but that's it. Someone it's said that there's Christmas eight people in the crew. Yet. I don't saying think that we know chat. how many people. Maybe I'm just making that up. Uh, some someone said something like that. No, it, their crew was many... small, only eight people. Oh, so okay. so like how how many are we at now? So we got captain, Nas, yeah, yeah. Nas, Starlink, Captain, Aditil, Leonor, Zizi, Chrysalis. Okay, so there's there's one missing. And okay. one more. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so If we count Naz, does Naz count as a member of the crew? I think Naz counts as a member I of think the crew, so. yeah. I think Chrysalis okay. would count Naz as a member of the crew, at least. If Chrysalis, Chrysalis counts Zed, as a member of the crew, Naz uh, counts as a Starling. member. Starling would count Naz as a member of the crew. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and it said Starling. Well, I mean, like, Chrysalis, Chrysalis has a job. It, what like what is Naz's job other than just like following Starling <laughs> around? I mean, around. so so, so <laughs> e, there was a line that said, "Indeed, there were some who say that bringing a sh- one aboard your ship was tantamount to suicide," and that's referring to a shade. So mm-hmm. maybe I'm he's the muscle <laughs> because like the shades we see in some of Man are scary. I <laughs> mean, the ones that. Uh, all of them are scary. The black company, the Night yeah. Brigade. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, all of them are scary, but particularly the ones in Night Brigade. So, um, like, has control of our scary. May- so maybe he's like, yeah, maybe don't board our ship, or I'm gonna be go shade on you. <laughs> like, okay, he's the nuclear deterrent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I was thinking more of like a local, like guy who knows things because. Like he's also, been across the cosmos yeah. with Chris, so maybe he's like, "Oh, I know this planet. I've been there mm. like two hundred years ago. Don't wear color red here, or you will be mobbed." So, and, the and science kind of officer stuff. type vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we are missing one, um, and so I imagine they're gonna be wacky, though. That's 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 what I've learned. Mm. Yeah. Um, what that be the skybreak in front? He's just part <laughs> oh, of the. <God. laughs> No, no, no. No one's allowed to have powers on the ship. They all, they, they, you could be a skybreaker, but it has to be a skybreaker who's like, like with, with like a, a dead plate or blade, mm-hmm. you know, like, like post. Oh, so it's going to be Sigzel. <laughs> just, just Sigzel, just nomads on the ship. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. yeah. like, yeah, we got to run from the Night Brigade, actually. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess we do. <laughs> and then Starling right. and Nomad just like reminisce about, like, yeah, Hoyd, right? Am I right? That <laughs> guy. <laughs> there was a line that said Hoyd just randomly disappeared from the ship. So that's fun mm-hmm. because. Also, the captain is an interim. Know. The captain is an interim captain. Oh, interesting. Right. Oh. And also that, like, well, so, so Zizis owns the ship. Yep. The captain is an interim captain. Hoyd was training Starling for leadership before he left. And so I'm kind of like, did Hoyd command the ship in some way, potentially? Which, I mean, feels like kind of a weird thing for him. But, I mean, I don't know. We, I don't know. We, we, no, we do need Hoyd to be on spaceships because, Steve, I don't know if you've heard this, but eventually we need... Hoyd on a bridge of a Rasharan starship, Kelsier oh, this. bridge of a oh, Skadrian starship, and, yes. and they're just they're sass like just but you know they're yeah. they're commanding you know giant armies and navies of yep. ships like that. I need I need that in my life where they're just <laughs> bitter centuries to millennia <laughs> of hatred is just like ah oh, yeah you're gonna get a bunch of people killed now <laughs> and then there's a space battle. Maybe Hoyd is the eighth crew member. I mean, he's not but here. Right? He yeah, but he appeared. said that yeah. Hoyd left. So what would Starling right, include? But like, did they did they say that like they have eight crew members right now or just in general? Maybe she's like counting Hoyd as I a crew know. member. 
Uh, I mean, we're still missing whoever the captain is, so. I I thought that was the captain was counted as one of the... Yeah, yeah, we we counted the captain. Um, Yeah, well, that's why, like... It, it including seems like the captain, you already it have like eight. eight there. Yeah. No, no, I don't think we do. No, no, let's not get captain, captain pilot. Naz, Naz, Starlink pilot, Aditil, Chrysalis, Chrysalis. Yeah, that's seven. That's seven. So yep. there's an eighth one. Yeah, there's an eighth. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Anywho, so that that'll be interesting to see, but. I, I don't I don't know about you. I this this is like so absolutely my jam of science fantasy type thing. Like I I I think some people might not enjoy Cosmere going in this direction, yeah. but I don't care about that because this is so <laughs> totally my jam that I'm like, yeah, I mean, great with me. It's Sounds great. It's gonna be bonkers. It's gonna be bonkers. <laughs> I, I, I do like the, the the space age Cosmere we got so far. Yeah, it's been. I, I do prefer fantasy over science fiction, so it's going to be like I'm here for it being the Cosmere and the fantasy elements in the science fiction. Uh, but I have nothing against science fiction, so it's just less interesting yeah. to me. Just, I mean, that's that's no. what I love about this, though, is that it's it's fundamentally still fantasy. It just is fantasy in a different time period. And that that's one of the reasons why I love the entirety of the Mistborn saga is seeing how the magic influences the development of society and technology. And then just we get that to the nth degree with the rest of the Cosmere. Yeah, like the final applications of Allomancy, like it, the, yeah. as good as they could possibly be. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, honestly, I'm super down with seeing the nth degree of like Fabrials on Roshar and whatever crazy magic things really are, cool. are mm-hmm. there. Maybe we'll learn what void binding is eventually, guys. Oh hey, God. wouldn't that be great? Maybe. Maybe. What if that Roshar's a void binder, you know? <laughs> People were legitimately suggesting that though. I mean, the glow's weird, right? Like that's that's yeah. what we were always saying. Cool. Any final thoughts before we get to who's that Cosmere character? It is gonna be good. Kind of, it's gonna be, yeah. it's gonna be and the, crazy. And the fact that we're getting this like after Stormlight Five, we're gonna have so much to talk about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, just Stormlight Five. Six months later, like, oh yeah, here's another thing. What's up? Yeah. Um, I'm ready. I'm not. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know if I'm ready. Like, it's gonna be a lot of fun, but I don't know if I'm ready for this level of Cosmere. Well, it's strap happening in. whether we're ready or not. Yeah, yeah <laughs> strap in. It's coming for us. Yep. I, I think what's happening is Brandon just keeps thinking about Cosmere Space Age and is like, this sounds awesome. And then he, and then he comes up with story. Right. And mm-hmm. is like, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's really cool, right? Like, you gotta have that. She doesn't want to wait anymore. No, yeah. no. Um, but like, it is interesting that like, okay, the radians definitely exist in some form, mm-hmm. right? Like for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. And Skadriel is not nuked uh, to oblivion, right? Like Skadriel <laughs> exists in some form. There's at least I a mean, southern hemisphere. <laughs> yeah. <There's- laughs> Imagine yeah. just have the planets. I mean, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Just slice and yeah. <laughs> Use this top for m- a- sources of metal. You know. That's, yeah. That's how planets work. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Anyway. Let's get on over to who's that Cosmere character. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for who's that Cosmere character. Ta. Welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17shard.com. I read each clue aloud, and these guys have a chance to guess who's that Cosmere Character. This first one is from longtime commenter and sender of Who's That Cosmere Character clues, Evelyn Basham. Ooh, so dangerous, Evelyn, to put the the answer though at the top. Though I just you just want to immediately say like the character <laughs> is. It's like that's that's not <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> Clue one: This character has been known to make interesting clothing choices. 
Adeline? It is not Adeline. I mean, the most interesting clothing choices we've seen, I would argue, have been Hoyd. But that <laughs> yeah. seems a little too on the nose. Look, sometimes it's a main character. Uh, is it Hoyd? It's not Hoyd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like, but um, like, what if you didn't guess it and it was Hoyd? You know, like that's the thing. Is it? Ma- Man is wears it a shoe as a necklace. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. What, Veronica? Is it Tara? It is not uh, Tara. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. I like Girlfriend. that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Wayne? It's not Wayne. Clue to. This character has shown great respect to a spren. Rock? Rock? Not rock. <laughs> Cord? Um, it's not cord. <gasps> uh, axes. It's not axes. I'll allow it. Wow. You me staring at my bookshelf. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stare <laughs> the at the bookshelf. <laughs> the classic. You gotta stare at the, the bookshelf. You gotta stare at the Roshar map. Eerie, Rira. Go through <laughs> all of them. Alon? You've already guessed this round. <laughs> Technically, you've actually guessed twice because you said uh, a thing the same time as Aleph. So, so that's why I'm like, yeah, I'll allow it because these guys said oh. it at the same time. So great respect is throwing me off. I know. It was respect for a spren specifically, right? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Don't yeah. say uh, respect to a spren. The Bonial didn't show great respect to like the sibling. There were... I, I, I would not say so. I, I, I think that was kind of the opposite of respect when you intentionally yeah, remake exactly. someone uh, to what you want. <laughs> like, Seems I like they interacted some... with the spread that doesn't be great respect. It's kind of, kind of a violation of consent, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Probably <laughs> <laughs> not great respect. Yeah. Uh, Yim, maybe. I don't Ooh, know. It's not Yim, but I like that. That's a good. That's good. Clue three. This character had a struggle with academic types. On their world. Oh, Nas? is it uh, felt? It's not felt. Naz. It's not Naz. Bayon. It's not Bayon. No, with the world hoppers. Watch it not be a world hopper. <laughs> <laughs> no, watch it not be a world hopper. Rayodin. It's not Rayodin. Clue four. This character has seen Hoid. I know, really yeah, narrows it down. Narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> the reactions this character after drinks water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this character Hello. uses investiture. It's like, yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> very useful. Lift? Not lift. I don't know. Lift isn't a very like show great respect type person. Not exactly. Oh, no, oh, but everything oh, oh. else fits. So I was like, you know what? Can you repeat the clues? Yeah, sure. Clue one. This character has been known to make interesting clothing choices. Clue two. This character has shown great respect to a spren. Clue three. This character had a struggle with academic types uh, on their world. And clue four. This character has seen Hoyd. No, no, that's not even... That's... An- my five. Uh, the fact that so many of these fit rock, but it's not rock, is throwing me off so hard. Definitely not rock. <laughs> painter, not painter. I'm just gonna go with it, even though I don't know Ralna. Oh, a friend. It's not oh, Ralna. Yeah, of course, she does count. Design. Um, it's not design. Clue five. This character won a climactic battle without ever touching a weapon. I am so confused. This is. I'm going to be facing my own like lack of Not awareness. So hard ones. Dalinar. Not Dalinar. Oh, I, like, I like Dalinar. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah. Yeah. Sazed. Not Sazed. That, that's also Sazed a fair. Is a yeah. good one. Don't know about clothing choices, but. I mean, it's robes. traditional Terry Sapphire is an interesting I mean, it is choices. notable. Like, what does interesting mean, for sure? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. What is interesting? <laughs> yeah. If, if not Painter, then Yumi. It is Yumi! Yay! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man, you're so close. <laughs> ah, you're on the board. 100% win rate for who's that Cosmere character, Steve. Hell yeah. Let's hey. see if you can maintain that. 
batting a thousand. All right. Yeah, I was like a little concerned on Clue too because I'm like, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, they're spreading. Like, yes, the spirits yeah, in Yumi are are obviously like exactly the corresponding spread, but like they're not spreading in the formal sense, but they're spreading yeah. in the Rosharan sense. So, I mean, that that's fair. Mm-hmm. But also, even design. Just stay, like, oh yeah, design. Yumi is, like... is very respectful to design in the oh, new. Oh yeah, shop. that's the, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, the that's actual... that's fair. I was I was thinking about the spirits she summons. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, even the clue was like Espren, right? Not just Spren. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 So, yeah, so they were true. totally thinking that's about true. design. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, good, Glad good I didn't touch. change anything and screw anything up, so that's good. <laughs> cool. This next one is from Benjamin Wager in Clue what is One. Your name? Yeah, I know. Clue One. This character is a point of view character. Kaladin? <laughs> Not Calvin. Crayson. Not Freythan. I like that. I miss Freythan. He's dead, though. Yeah, he's a cool character. Freythan's awesome. Watch his ghost come back in the land for sequels. Yeah, maybe he's a shade, too. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd actually be super down with that cognitive shadow, Freythan. That sounds badass. <laughs> Axies. We'll say axes. Oh. 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 oh, 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 well, you <laughs> both guessed <laughs> axes, and guess what? It's okay. not axes. Oh, no. Nope. You're, oh, you're getting. Yeah, no. You could, you could give Steve another. I asked. I said okay, it first. Yeah. I'll, I'll let. I'll let Steve guess another. Yeah. Puli. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you went there. It's not Puli, but uh, I, I okay. appreciate that because I was like, if you're going for esoteric interlude characters, you have to go with Puli. <laughs> <laughs> it's the law. It's the law. That Skybreaker will get us. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm making sure we're not going to be attacked by rogue skybreakers. Yes. yes. AKA the sailors on the infinite sea, they're coming. <laughs> and maybe there's Cadrians. I don't know. Light uh, in their pocket. Yeah. Clue two. This character is saved by a main character. Aiden? Is not Aiden. I like that, though. Oh, let me. I oh, what's what his, his name? name? The, the one from like, the view character of the of beginning Wave. of Way of Kings. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes it ben. is sen yes you you ben? you, you yeah. I, I i i will grant that to both of you you directly <laughs> said that and uniquely identified it as, yeah, is I a pov was anyway. saved by calvin was i mean how saved was sen if you think about it he was saved I but mean, then like wasn't. killed like a little bit later like just, yeah temporarily saved temporarily saved like ben, slightly prolonged his life by calvin <laughs> <laughs> The other clues are this character dies young, this character is a soldier, and this character fights a shard bearer. So I like that. That's yeah. good. It's nice. I like how yeah. we both it's... guessed the same character, but also <laughs> just not remember his name. Yeah, nailed that. <laughs> that. That one was definitely an easier one. That Yumi one was definitely yeah. like, okay, that's that's challenging. When whenever it's like clues where it's like interesting clothing choices. Like, what does that mean though? And it's like, you know, it's something really specific to what the true yeah. answer is, but just have no idea what it is. Those are the worst. <laughs> exactly. You're like, when you go with POV character, like if it's not a main character, yeah. then it's going to be one of those esoteric yes. like POVs. Coolie. Because otherwise, why are you going to use that clue when a main character would have a lot harder clues to use? Yeah. It happens. Now we're going to go on to our Who's that Cosmere character priority queue? For just the low price of $10 a month, you can be a herald on our Patreon and submit ones that will be read slightly faster uh, sometimes. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> don't oversell it. I know. Don't, don't oversell <laughs> it. Uh, amusingly, hilariously, this one was sent before the Who's That Cosmic characters we read before in the regular queue. But I know, d- don't oversell it, the, this, <laughs> but look, the regular queue is kind of random. It's not even in order. Apparently, there's lots of spam there. So, you know, like, it, it, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> so you'll never know if you get it. But this one is sent by... Our good friend Jester Lavore, who made these wonderful hey, overlays. Jester, hey. Hey. Ooh, thank nice. you so much for those. Clue one. This yeah. character has no last name. Cher. Wait. For a moment, I thought you you said like Cher as in the musician. 
That yeah. is exactly what I said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Eminem, actually. <laughs> okay, but like the fact that we don't have a rapper in the Cosmere yet is a crime. Era three, you know. Ooh, that's a good account. Era okay, three in cyberpunk it. era, just the rappers oh, for sure. Era. You know. Yeah. Ten soon. It's not ten soon. Janat. Not Janat. Bayado Mishram. Ooh, it's not by Demishram, no. Uh, Axes. It's not Axes. <laughs> His surname is The Collector, good sir. The Collector. <laughs> <laughs> Middle name, The. Title last air. name. <laughs> yes. Good. Clue 2. This character's name has an Aeon in it. Rayodin? Not Rayodin. But is that Aeon intentional? I don't know. It could be. It could um, not be. That's that's possible. Hi, Ayn? Uh No, it's it's not. It's not him. Honestly, I don't even know if Elaine's <sighs> characters have last names. I, I don't know. Does anyone on cell not, have a last name? It's not Milan. I like that. That's a good, that's a good Aeon thought there. I was just wondering, does anyone on cell have like last names? Ati. Uh, Atti? No, it's not Atti. That's a, that's a good guess, though. I like that. Ooh, ooh, okay. Ooh, clue three. I hadn't read all these, so this is good. The Aeon in this character's name is the name, is the Aeon of a Seon we have seen on screen. Oh, wow. The biotic crystals. Hey, right? Okay. I'm going to go with Kaladin because it has Ayla in it. <laughs> it's not Kaladin. I, I like that, though. <laughs> this is the most esoteric way to get to Kaladin ever. It's like, yeah, there's an Aeon in there. <laughs> like, I like that. <laughs> that would have been very funny. We, we, we are not allowed to look up Seons no, here, are we? No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> yeah, Copper mind like, is forbidden. How is that what the world is? Uh, sorry, you need Seon called. I yeah. remember now. Yeah. How? I don't remember a second. anyone. I remember what the Seons that we've seen translate to. And I can't remember what the Aeon <laughs> is. I'm like, who was Groyan or Tellery or whoever who had one? Well, what was it? I have no idea. Ash? Yeah. Uh, I was like, Ayan? I'm like, okay, I'm just going to throw on my guess with Shalash, even if it isn't spelled with the E of, like, Ashy. Mm, no, um, it's not Shalash. I like that, though. Yes. I, I, I haven't guessed for this one, have you I? You have not. TN? Not TN. I, I like that. That's that's a good one. Yes. Yes. That does match the clues. Serene? Not, it's not Serene. Clue for this character's like name has an oh in-world God. meaning that we know. Adolin? Not Adolin. That's exactly where my mind went. Oridin? Yeah, that's like, it's not Oridin. I like that. That's another good one, yeah. We know the meaning of Oridin. Yeah, I think you yeah. do. It's mm-hmm. mentioned. I don't remember what it is, but I think it's mentioned. <laughs> I think it was something to do with like, light or but, something. Child like, of, yeah. yeah, child of light. Child of or, light, something like that, yeah. Sure. Born unto light. Yeah, something like that. No, uh, Adolin is born unto light. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, then, then Oridin is uh, born unto eternity? <laughs> yeah, that, I know. No, that. that's Kaladin. Or is that Kaladin? Dang it. Born unto uh, <laughs> being a cool guy. <laughs> child of peace. That was that peace. was child of peace. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. That's um, like a specific. Yep. You're correct. Rayodin? Nope. And We've I think Rayodin was that. already guessed, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, we're that's, that's a rip. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't remember if it was this one or a last. Yeah. Or that is, that is, that is the challenge sometimes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. This is hard. Case. That guess? That's my guess. Yeah. I don't have anything better. Case? No, it's not case. All right. Clue five. This character's name is only three letters long. You're sure it's not Addy? I'm sure, yes. Wait. Wait. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, don't keep us in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> you, read out the, you read out the clues again. I absolutely can. Clue one. I'm about to be. This character has no last name. 
Clue two, this character's name has an Aeon in it. Clue three, the Aeon in this character's name is the Aeon of a Seon we have seen on screen. <laughs> gotta, gotta go carefully through that one. Um, this character's name has an in-world meaning that we know. And clue five, this character's name is only three letters long. Is it E-N, Rude, and Seon? It is not. Because we like that. There's nothing in there saying that it isn't one of the Seons. It is not a uh, Yen. The same as a Seon's name, but it could... I do remember what a Rayon and Seon is. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I liked the TN guess though with with that with that Aeon. Like that was that was that was nice. I liked that. Ashes is four. I don't okay, know why I, I'm, I'm still trying. I've already think. guessed Kaladin, but I'm gonna just guess Ayla. Just because it's my name. You're correct. It is a law. <laughs> there you go. And I did partially get this because you were on this one. <laughs> yes, because I thought it'd be funny. Why, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Never guessed that. Oh my god. Awesome. Yes. Very that was, good. That was a that really was... good. That was a really good clue, like to throw us off yeah. the scent of Sion's themselves. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, you, you, Steve, you look just like, oh, oh my I, god. <laughs> Yay! That's 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 uh, Shalon Seon. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one in Rhythm of War. Yeah, uh, one in the box. Yeah, it's the, the one that one. means beautiful or handsome. I remember that. <laughs> Remember what it translates to? You're, you're, you're set for, <laughs> for the life we remember the You're, you're getting but... ready for those Elantra sequels, <laughs> and you're just ready. Sequels. Did you do a video on all like the Aeon meanings or something? How do you just know I that off have... the top of your head? <laughs> I just recently finished my like in-depth read through for Rhythm of War. I see, and I remember like that one specifically because it was recent. But there were some other ones that. Are they're just rattling around in here? <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, I'm kind of getting the temptation to like start the Wind and Truth three read, but I know I have to wait. Steve, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, it's been a blast. So, so happy to be here. Yeah, we should. We'll have you back sometime. Uh, but at the very least, we will have Isles of the Ember Dark to enjoy next year which is crazy so like next summer ish probably um which is insane because yeah we really will not be done with uh wind and truth topics uh if it's like june next june not even close not even yeah. close uh so anyway you can find us on 70 chart.com for all your news discussion theories and fun that you could ever want we have a huge discord server as well with lots of discussion on isles of the amber dark and uh, you can support our Patreon for as little as a dollar. We commission cool art every month and you can vote on what art you want. And uh, we're on social media and stuff. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you all next time. Uh, I'm not sure. Apparently there's going to be a bonus chapter. Oh, yeah. In, in next week's newsletter, mm -hmm. which better come out after this episode is out otherwise i will get constant comments about it so i'm hoping that i get this edited before that happens we might do something with that we might not depends how spicy it is if it's another chapter 11 maybe we'll do another one of these <laughs> yeah. uh, but it'll probably be two weeks from because we, uh, we can't now. even predict what chapter brandon is gonna send no you really like, can't you, can like, you really can't we can't even say oh well it's the next chapter it's chapter 12 no we have no idea <laughs> maybe it's gonna be chapter six so then it's six three one it's sad that that is plausible though one one last thing before mm -hmm. we go, Eric. You said that you wanted to tease viewers about something. Ooh, from last episode that we put out. Oh, about I was how like, I for a second, something. I was like, I have no recollection of this at all. <laughs> no one who watched None. our last e episode, the year of Sanderson retrospective, saw the six three ones that we put in the overlay. None of you. No one commented at all. Someone noticed Ooh. in Ian's background, but there were there were there was both in 
the who's that Cosmere character view and the main view. You do have to look pretty closely, though, but it is in there. That's true. Uh, I did make it pretty hard to see, but uh, it is. I did add that text there for you. It's uh, there. It is definitely there. So go check that out uh, for clues to nothing, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe to something. <laughs> I, I have no idea. So anyway, we'll see you all next time. Bye. 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 Bye.